Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. They've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from LA. I'm Jenny Taft mm. here with Skip Bayless, Shannon Sharp. Mm. Good morning. Hi, Jenny. Hey. Oh, 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 How we doing? Oh, oh, oh goat. Goat, you know, he had a rough night. Don't do that, Skip. Skip. It was not, horrible. We're not talking about that right now. The Skip, goat almost you, blew the game to the thunder. How are you, Jenny? I'm good. I, I can't wait I to saw talk that one. Hey, Skip, how are you today, Skip? Minutes. I'm better than LeBron. No, you're not. We got the best record. Triple double. Is that how it is? No what? Five. Yeah. We got five cases on that. Oh, five cases on what? Next 20 games. Oh, really? I'm looking good right now, Skip. How you think? You're looking good on that one. Oh, LeBron said much better than LeBron looked last night. Let me (sighs) guess. LeBron set the schedule, right? Mm -hmm. Because we got the Thunder last night, got to begin tonight. Uh, How do you do that? Okay, we are going to get to how (laughs) impressive LeBron's historic night was. I know Shannon is excited. We'll see about Skip. Brett Favre says Brady is not the one to blame for the Patriots' offensive woos, but we got to start with, you know, our good old friend Jerry Jones and what he's saying about. The Cowboys, according to a report, the Cowboys have, quote, learned from the Vikings loss when they stubbornly forced the ball to an ineffective Ezekiel Elliott. But but. despite this report and Dak Prescott's recent success, Jerry said yesterday that the Cowboys would not shy away from feeding Zeke. Take a listen. I want to be real clear about something. Zeke is one of the best football players in the National Football League, and it makes no sense not to be trying to get the ball to Zeke or get the plays in and around Zeke. Shannon, what do you make of Jerry saying this? Wait for it. I want to be clear. Yeah, very clear. I I want to be abundantly clear, and I want to be crystal clear. I agree with Jerry. Skip, here's the thing. Look, you can't say because a guy had a bad couple of weeks, all of a sudden, we're going to throw him out. We're just going to throw, throw, throw. Because I remember there are some times that Dak Prescott had a bad couple of months mm. and they still threw the football. So what do you do? So let me get this straight. If Dak Prescott would have three straight incompletions, do you abandon the passing game and just run it now? No, you don't, Skip, because here's the thing. He's still Ezekiel Elliott. Even though Tom Brady is not having a Tom Brady-type season, mm. got a defensive coordinators, mm. they still respect him because that's still Tom Brady. Even though Zeke is not where we are normally accustomed to seeing him, top two, top three, and running the football at this point mm-hmm. in the season, Skip, he's still Zeke. And teams still pay him the utmost respect. The Minnesota Vikings, Jerry said mm-hmm. it, Steven said it. The last completion that ran out the clock, the reason why Blake Jarwin was so wide open, they were hell-bent on stopping Zeke. So you fake the ball to Zeke, put it in his belly, you pull it out, Blake Jarwin is wide open, ball game. So he's, he's still very well respected. Look, I, I, I get Jerry, and Jerry says, no, nah, we're not going to abandon that. We're not going to say, oh, because Zeke got stuffed a couple of times and he's had a bad couple of weeks, all of a sudden now we're not, we're not going to run the football. We are going to run the football. So, Skip, I know, you know, look, you want Dak to throw it for 50 times a game. Mm. It's not going to happen. Jerry Jones has spoken, and yes, you like this. Yes. <laughs> and I'll bet he's spoken to his coaching staff. Oh. Because we know who coaches this team in the biggest picture. It's the owner slash general manager. Go ahead. Skip. Zeke, is, when he gets 100 yards, it has a great impact on the defense, considering Dak is just 2-10 and 10 when Zeke is held under 100 yards, 75 yards. Mm-hmm. So this notion that, oh, Dak can do it, because we've seen Dak without Zeke. We've seen that. And I don't. what, what, what confuses me? is that when Zeke is running, he has the best offensive line in football. Mm. Zeke gets stopped. Zeke's terrible. What about an offensive line? Now, you said it. After it happened that Monday, they played Minnesota, you said every last one of them got their royal tails kicked. Mm -hmm. Now Zeke's terrible. But if they got their tail kicked, how can Zeke do anything if he's not getting blocking? Mm -hmm. You can't have it both ways, Skip. You can't say, and everybody, you can't say he has a dominant, he has one of the best offensive lines in football. Zeke gets stopped. Oh, Zeke's terrible. No, he's not. No, he's not. Teams are still gearing up to stop him. Now, at some point in time, they're going to have to figure this out. Like, well, hell. Dak's killing us through the air. And so now they're going to start playing coverage. And guess what? Mm. Zeke's numbers will go back up again. But I totally agree with Jerry Jones. Mm. I'm not abandoning abandoning Zeke Elliott. He's still a top-tier player in the the NFL. Mm -hmm. And teams respect him because he still has 2-1. Now, if you don't believe that's to be the case, put Tony Pollard back there and you see what happens. Mm. 
Belichick did bring up Tony Pollard in his little speech that he gave about the Cowboys yesterday. Do you? Let me ask you. Brought him up out of nowhere. Okay. Sure. Unsolicited. Let me ask you anything. The guy you call Mike Pollard yeah. during Let me ask you a question. Yep. He's do learned. You, when mm. it comes to coaching, mm -hmm. when it comes to Coach Belichick putting out information, do you believe anything that he says? <laughs> I, I, I thought it was significant that he noticed Tony Pollard because, boy, you better notice You've it. You've pointed him. Yes, thank you very much. Now, my turn. <laughs> I'm going to quote Jerry verbatim here. Let me be real clear about something. What Jerry Jones just dug in and said is very, very wrong. And I'm going to quote our friend Clarence Hill Jr. from the Fort Worth Star-Telegram because in the middle of his mm -hmm. piece, as you referred to, According to a source, the Cowboys learned from the Vikings' loss when they stubbornly forced the ball to an ineffective, El ineffective Elliot and shunned the passing game, which had brought them back. Did I not beat this desk the day after the Vikings' loss, the Monday after the Vikings' loss? Oh. What are they doing? Second, and then, what was it? Second and two at Second. the 11. Second and yeah. two at the 11? Zeke nowhere, Zeke minus three, then throw it to Zeke in the flat when he can't separate from anybody. Jerry Jones, you're walking a dangerous path here because you're speaking publicly with your wallet and your pride. Maybe I should reverse the order, with your pride and your wallet, <laughs> because Jerry Jones is the one that gave Ezekiel Elliott 90 million total, 50 million guaranteed. Okay. He made Ezekiel Elliott by far the highest paid running back in the history of this game. He deserved to be. And lately he's been giving you, by his standards, Zeke's standards, 50 cent games. And Jerry, I believe, is starting to worry uh-oh, did I get taken for a ride by that guy? Because Jerry's big picture philosophy is, by God, if you paid a quarter of a billion dollars for a yacht, you don't dock it. You <laughs> sail the seven seas with it, you right? Do. You sail it on first down, and you, if you need to, you sail it on it. second. You establish the run. I like it. So wrong. This team has turned quietly and quickly into Dak Prescott's team. Ezekiel Elliott is handicapping and ineffectively killing this team, even though the shock is they still lead the whole league in yards gained. The whole league. And Pro Football Focus still says they have the best offense, handicapped by the running back. Let me count the way, shall we? Sure. Ezekiel Elliott on first down carries is tied for second in the whole NFL. Tied for second in the times he has carried the ball on first down. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Same guy, Ezekiel Elliott, in yards per carry on first down, ranks 24th. Hmm. What do I tell you every Monday on this show? I know I'm a psycho fan. I know I just lose it during Cowboy games, but I am beating my head against my wall because every first down, it's Zeke one, Zeke two, Zeke zero. It's always second and eight, second and nine, or second and 10. Do you know how hard that is on the quarterback? It's what they call playing from behind the chains. Yep. Guess who leads the whole league in second down passing yardage and second down touchdown passes? My quarterback does. Mm -hmm. Zeke is digging little holes on first down that my quarterback keeps throwing them out of. Mm -hmm. Do you know the degree of difficulty? Do you know how hard it is to lead the league in passing when uh, just t down after second down after second down, you're in second and long, and he leads the league in passing yardage on second down. Okay. Well, you can say, well, he's got to throw it down the field because they're behind the chains. But he's completing a whole lot of second down passes, including touchdown passes, because the running back keeps digging holes. So now Jerry jo you know what happened. I've just told you. He has very effectively made it known to the coaching staff, we will run 21. We will not abandon 21. No, nor should they. And again, it's the most predictable play call in the entire NFL is 21's going to get it on first down. I just sit back, my little room that I watch my games in, it's not up there in Bel Air where you are, but it's down it's in the flats. Yeah. I'm down in the flats. That's what they call where I live. Oh, the they call the flats. Oh, you're yeah. in the flats. I don't oh, know. You post but, a few videos. Yeah. It doesn't and, look and like I, that. I sit back and I say, <laughs> I know what's coming. 
One or two yards is coming on first down. Zeke. If you know what's coming, what do you think the defense know? What do you think Bill Belichick is doing as we speak? First down. Well, it's just going to be Zeke. Well, those- Second down is going to be a pass. First down run to Zeke. Second down pass. How can you win games that way well, consistently? Hold on. Why you put Zeke's not calling the plays? Where is Kellen Moore's responsibility in that? What about the offensive line? Mm. Now, you see, if he's doing so good on second down, what does that mean? Mm. He's getting great, great protection, correct? Mm. Yep. Is Zeke getting that same kind of run-blocking protection mm. that Dak is getting in the passing game? I don't think so. So you might say uh, uh, Zeke is digging holes, but the offensive line damn sure pushing him in it. Mm. He's now ranked eighth in overall rushing yards, just for the record, Zeke yeah. is. And yet the quarterback leads the league in passing yards and obviously all year has led the league in QBR. What would you do, Shannon Sharp, if you were the play caller or the, the during the week strategist? What would you do in your meetings? What would you start saying? What's, what's, here's the thing. I'm not, I'm not going to just – look, I agree. Um, um, there are times that – Let's, let's, this is what's going to happen. And I know you and I know everybody else. The first time it's third and one mm-hmm. and Dak throws the ball and it's incomplete. Why did you give it to Zeke? Why did you give it to Zeke? You, if he can't get one yard. You won't hear it from me. Okay. The All quarterback's right. playing out of his mind. He should be in the MVP race. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. But the numbers are screaming from all directions. MVP, MVP. Six and four, six and four. Jerry Jones is saying, let me be very clear about something. You know, Zeke is one of the best players in the National Football League because you paid him like he's one of the – you paid him like he's maybe is the best. Is, is, that, is Jerry Jones that source that uh, uh, Clarence Hill talked about in that article? No, I mean, I the, the source is opposite Jerry yeah, Jones. Exactly. Right. Uh, and, and again, what have I always told you about the way a coaching hierarchy works? The head coach dictates run or pass. Okay. Yeah. Run it, pass it, run it, pass right. it. And again, they probably – He makes suggestions. He don't yeah. tell you to play the call. He won't he tell makes, you the exact call. Right. Run it, pass it. Right. Run it, pass it. And you know they script out however, I don't know how many they do. Some do as many as 15 yeah. plays. But, but it's, again, it's, it's pretty much already in concrete how you're going to start the game. Yes, And yes. it's in concrete usually that they're going to try to feed the beast. Mm-hmm. I just haven't seen much of this from Zeke. And I keep telling you, and I want to beat the, so to speak, dead horse here, but he just doesn't look like himself. I am hoping against hope he snaps out of it. Sunday afternoon at, what is it, 425 Eastern in Foxborough. I hope he just snaps out of it and makes me eat every word I just spat out on the table right. because I still love him and I need him and they need to be balanced to go places. But right now, they're a passing football team. And if you're effectively passing the football, shouldn't you throw it on first down first? Well, see, this is the difference between everybody else and the, NF- and, and the New England Patriots. Mm. The New England Patriots are a team that they let situations dictate what they are. See, you saying they're a passing team, they're the, therefore they should pass. Or they're a running team, therefore, therefore they should run. The New England Patriots go into a game. Oh, you stopping the run? Tom, we need you to throw it 45 times. Okay. Oh, you can't yeah, stop the run? But usually that has been decided during the week. No, no, no. They'll no. just flip the script on you when you least expect it, and they'll take the ball out of Brady's hands and just run it down your That's throat. That's my point. But you're saying you're a passing team, therefore Dak should need more opportunity to throw the ball no no matter what transpired during the course of the week or the game. No, that's not how it works. But, Skip, for them to just told us, like, you know what, we're a passing team now. Zeke, you're going to get, like, 10, 15 carries. You're asking for trouble. Okay, but he has become, to me, the complementary weapon when in the old days, all I heard from you is, they'll only go as far as Zeke could carry them. Right? And I got to tell you, that tired old myth is now defunct. No, it's not. It's gone. So after two games. Mm -hmm. Well, it's been, no, the whole year. He's eighth in rushing. That didn't just happen in two games. Okay, hold up. Your guy is number one in passing, yards yards per attempt, and QBR, and all you got to show for it is six and four. So Mm -hmm. how good is he? Okay, that's what I'm saying. Your philosophy has been upside down because too much... Uh, too often you're trying to establish the run at the sake of the pa- at the uh, at the expense of the pass. But Skip, yeah. you have all these numbers in your favor. You say, why do you fall behind? Because you're trying to run 21, oh, so- 21, oh, 21. Oh, so- you're giving him too many carries early when you could strike lightning. You know, you could just go boom, boom, boom. Maybe, maybe Dak could get an early hot hand. They did against Philadelphia. That's the only time they ever got oh, right out of the block. Oh, yeah. oh. So yeah. considering that you've only beaten one team that has more than three wins, okay. and that's Philly, right. what'd you do against New Orleans? Mm. The first half. Yeah. 
We ran Zeke a whole bunch. Well, you, you threw a whole bunch. Nowhere. Too. Remember what happened in the Coliseum in the playoff game out of here? Yeah, I do. Boy, they just kept saying, just give it to 21. And he went nowhere. Because they didn't believe your quarterback could beat him. And they were right. Jerry Goff outplayed your quarterback. Okay, but are you saying the Cowboy coaching staff didn't no, think I'm that Dak could win no, the no, game? No, 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 Skip. I'm saying the Rams, Wade Phillips, says we will stuff the run mm-hmm. okay, remember, because we don't believe the quarterback can beat us. My quarterback had a much better QBR than no, Jared didn't. Goff did in that game. Yes, he did way better. And they got back in the game because the quarterback started have, to throw it. Skip, have your quarterback ever That was a 30-22 game. That was a one-score too game. Too little, too late. If you, don't yeah. mind, if you don't mind me asking, have your quarterback ever beat Jared Goff? In head-to-head competition. Beats him in QBR No, like no, 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 no. You said that don't matter. Yeah. You said that don't matter. It's, it's, it's oh, hold 22 on. 22 men play pro football. Oh. Those just five in pro basketball. In the AFC Championship game, Brady versus Mahomes, who had a higher QBR? Mm-hmm. Mahomes did. Okay. But who won, right? Who took over the overtime. <laughs> well, who did take over the overtime? Yeah. Well, uh, Dak Prescott took over the second half of that game. I'll go show you the numbers. We don't have time to go back into them, but he lit them up in yeah. the second you half. Remember the, do you remember the game at home? When you guys were ahead, like at one point, 24 to 6 over Jerry Goff, and yep. then bing, bing, bam, bam, boom, boom. And next day, you know, they're coming off the field, Todd Gurley and Aaron Donald celebrating. Well, he threw a middle screen to Todd Gurley and took it like 82 Whoa, yards. I okay. Up. I can't stop that. Uh, Dak can't stop that. Oh, but Dak, Dak had an opportunity to put more. See, just because it's the halftime and you have 24, mm-hmm. that doesn't mean you got to you filled your quota. Mm-hmm. You can go get 24 more mm-hmm. if you like. So, what did I tell you last year was happening right before your very eyes? Your myth was defunct last year. It wasn't Zeke's team. It became Dak's team after Amari Cooper joined Dak, and he had a legitimate, genuine, true number one receiver. Okay. And they took off because that tandem took off. And all of a sudden, what happened down the stretch? They go eight and two, including one playoff win and one loss. And in that stretch, they threw it 354 times to only 282 runs. Yeah. So so they were swinging toward pass-heavy, in the eight and two stretch to cap off the year, and it costs you five more cases of diet. Dude. But I get it back. Okay, but but it cost you, Didn't and that's it? who they were. And then they came back this year, and we know there was the long Cabo holdout. And then Jerry finally said, "Okay, I give up. I got to do this. I'm going to give him fifty million dollars guaranteed, and." He's not getting much bang for his bucks that he paid because Zeke looks like he's still running or plotting in Cabo Sand. Skip. Right? Skip. It's two games. He's had a bad two games. But Eighth and op- rushing for the whole year. But his offensive line, Skip, you do realize these offensive linemen are starting to get old. Travis Frederick missed the entire season. Ty mm-hmm. Smith has been in and out of the lineup the last two to three years. Yep. Zach Martin has battled back and knee injuries over the last couple of years. Lyle Collins has a sprained knee and right. probably won't be able mm-hmm. to play this coming Sunday. So, so. so what we're seeing, what we're seeing is that you saying Zeke is getting old and not giving you a lot of no, bang? I didn't say he's getting old. Well, I'm just saying. like, what is he, 24? Well, well he's getting old in, in running back yeah. years. Well, with, you with, could with argue. The, with the load he's yep. been taking mm-hmm. over the last couple of years. But his offensive line is also skipped yep. because that's the one position. You get no plays off. You bang every play. Because if a wide receiver, I'm not getting up. You know, if I'm not, you know, in the run block, you know, I just jog off the line and try to hold the backside. But they every play. So put some of that blame on the offensive line, I do. that Zeke is not being able to get to the line of scrimmage because you said he's getting second and ten. That means he's not getting to the line of scrimmage. Okay, that's a fair point. Maybe it's in concert with the offensive line. Yes. Maybe both are way overrated and overpaid at this point in the season. Yeah, well, they, mm. okay? they got them on the so contract for some years. To you come. better dance with who brung you home last year because what brought you home was throwing the football. But where did it get you? It got your playoff get, win. Well, it wasn't against been you. been a long time. One more. Uh, one yeah, more. I mean, Skip, well, I'm not going to. I needed the second round of the playoffs. You, That's, you, that'll work. If you just go, if I just get to take the girl to the prom, mm. buy a cassage, mm. and they did a light, she give me a kiss on the cheek and say good night. Mm. What have I done? Mm. You mean to tell me I got this tuck seat or I got to turn back in? So all you cared yeah, about was that is a kiss a on the cheek. That is a bad no! example, Shannon. No, that's what my point is. What are you trying to get that, at? That's my point. Did you want to just share her company for the night? Yes. Come no, on. No, I was in school with her. I ain't want to share no photo. company. photo. No. Come on. That's why I didn't go to the prom. See, Skip, yeah, that's why right good there. Good news, you didn't go to the that's prom. That's why I didn't go to the prom that right there. Couldn't get a date? There you go, man. I don't know. <laughs> Our co- Coach Hall, who's the track coach, says, look, the prom is on this date. 
No, I yeah. can schedule a track meet. Uh, okay. I don't understand. You know what the problem? Mm. Yeah. What the problem, Skip? Uh, hey. You think a handsome gentleman like myself couldn't get a date? You can go Trip to the track down. The, the, the prom really doesn't late. start until like nine o'clock. It was out of it was out of town. Uh-huh. What was out of town? The track meet. Uh-huh. How far out of town? Like thirty Savannah. minutes? No, nah, like an hour. Like an hour, you can get back for the prom. We ready, Skip? I was tired. You know, I mean, with all these races, I was tired. I'm so tired, yeah. I couldn't make it. That's you good. Skip, you're a hater. Skip, you a hater. Well, I'm just putting in <laughs> you, some perspective. Did you go to the prom? Yes, I went to two in a row. I went to junior and senior Were you prom, prom king? No. I feel like I you'd be not. prom king. Uh, my, my girlfriend, who became my wife, was. There you go. She was See, homecoming Ernestine? queen. She was everything. Yeah. She, well, I was Mr. No, senior. No, not, not Ernestine. I mean, this is my I was Mr. Oh. I was Mr. Senior. Mr. Senior. And what guess what they got mean? right? Most yeah. likely to succeed. <laughs> Uh, get you, what? You got that? I'm old like, did they nail that one, Jenny? I mean. <laughs> Funny hit it out the park with that one. Really? The yeah. Conference. The conference. Yeah, they got that one right, too. You most the, athletic. The I guy who them. almost flunked out was most likely to succeed? <laughs> they knew. They, they knew. knew. I bring oh. my senior book, you ought to see, when you in the NFL and famous, don't forget me. Mm. All of them signed that, because I, I told them. I really like you to really? bring that. Yes! Huh. Of course, I'm you had only six this. people in your senior class. <laughs> you I, had okay. I had 60. I had 60. 60, yes. Ooh. Well done. 60. Yeah. But they knew. even down. Hey, Skip, you a hater. You been hate. Hold on, you make it seem like you had like a thousand. Huh? You had twenty two. He had a huge in class. my class. Yeah, six eighty one. Hold on, back then. Yeah. Mm. What and, do you mean back then? Weren't you the biggest high <laughs> school? I mean, you don't think people were? It was, it was the baby boom. You know, like it was after the war, right? Skip. What happened? Six eighty one. I mean, they, largest I mean, high school your, in the state of Oklahoma. Skip. It Everybody. Was. I mean, you had like first through twelfth in one class. Mm. Huh. You know. What are you going to do? I would have been valedictorian. Now, you, 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 I would you, have you been. Know, would have. You I were you. It's a simple yes or no, were you? <laughs> you would have been? She didn't take driver's ed, and she beat me. She Seriously? Because I, I took driver's ed, and they don't give A's in driver's ed. They give, nobody gets an A. Because Why? Because you, you could drive. Wow. You could I drive. got a B that in driver's ed, and it fair. cost me. I was salutatorian. Ah, salutatorian. But uh, who knows about Kevin out of second place? You laugh. You were dead. Like, you like me. It all makes sense now. Now you got to win everything. I graduated at the bottom of my class. All because of driver's ed. No, Who I graduated at the bottom of my class. Yeah. So the salutatorian got the same as me. Yeah. You know who she was? Justine Coyle. I'll never forget it. Yeah. Justine Coyle Wait, yeah. me out. I didn't even know her. Wait Justine, 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 you've motivated Justine. this guy she, she his went, entire life. She went to life. Harvard. That's why she beat you out. Yeah. I need to know what she's doing now. She's I a really doctor do. in Oklahoma City. Yeah, because she's worked an out just well for both yep. of you and guys. You, and you're not a doctor. She you're did all of this L. because of prom. Because he used a prom yeah. analogy and he's just taking a trip he, down he, he, memory lane. Dagger you, he won a playoff game. Who does that? <laughs> all together. Who does that? Yeah. All together. We are Jerry, going to talk stop about it. No mercy. Did you know that as many as 7 out of 10 adults wished they played a musical instrument? Unfortunately, many never do because they think it's either too late for them to start or too expensive. Musician is an online music education platform rethinking the way people learn music. It's the fun, easy, and affordable way to learn guitar, piano, bass, or even singing. Just download the app to your desktop, tablet, or phone and start playing. Musician is perfect whether you're just starting out or have been playing for years. Enjoy thousands of popular songs and expertly crafted lessons and exercises across dozens of genres. Compared to private lessons, Musician is more affordable and lets you learn on your own schedule. You'll get bite-sized lessons, easy-to-follow instructions, and exercises tailored to your goals. Using Musician to learn an instrument like guitar or piano is much better than trying to teach yourself. So, if you've been wanting to learn an instrument or simply want some help getting back to playing, check out Musician. You can get an extended 14-day free trial of their Premium Plus package at musician.com slash play. That's unlimited lessons and unlimited songs on as many instruments as you want for two whole weeks. Just go to musician.com slash play to start your free trial today. That's Y-O-U-S-I-C-I-A-N dot com slash play. No mercy. So, guys, LeBron led the Lakers to their NBA best 12th win of the season and made some history on his way. His 25 points, 11 rebounds, and 10 assists made LeBron the first ever player to record a triple-double against all 30 NBA teams. LeBron said he wasn't sure what to think about it, but was just happy it came in a win. Because you know what? That's what he cares about. He loves to win. Shannon, how impressive is this feat by LeBron? What do you got? 
Hey, Skip. Oh. Oh, goat man. Wait, are you chef or goat? I'm I don't know. You got split personalities Can you going see? On. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What I got, Skip? Yeah. Yeah, you can't. They didn't release these to the public. There's no that way you can Authentic, see I guess. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely authentic. <laughs> There's a lot going on. You know what? I, I have never in my <laughs> life seen a goat who could cook. Have oh, you yeah. seen a, a yeah, goat yeah. cook before? Yeah, old, no. goat, old goat James. Goat cook? Look at this right here. Skip, you know this? Have it you seen like... anybody wear these? No! Huh. Only the Lakers. And Shay Sharp got this. How'd you get it? No, we see all see Connected. <laughs> DM connections, right? Skip, you, huh? why you got to tell everything? Maverick Carter. Thank you, Maverick. Actually, it's uh, Randy. Randy, you, way to go, Randy, man. <laughs> you do know what dry, the definition yeah. of dry snitching. No. It's impromptu. Yeah. Answering of questions that was not asked of the, you. I'm wet snitching. I'm not dry snitching. <laughs> you dry I'm snitching. actually just drip <laughs> snitching. That's nice, here. though. I like yeah, it. You, you like yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. I'd like one too. If okay, I'll, I'll, I'll hook Thank it up. You, you want one? I mean, look at the color. You got one coming. Today. You got one coming because they're going to win the title, so you got to get up here with that. With okay. The, <laughs> what is tell? Ask that question again. Um, How impressive is this feat by LeBron? Yeah, very impressive. Yeah, you just go with the show, your skill. Sustained mm. greatness. Mm. Now, we're not talking about one team or 10 teams. We're talking about all 30. Mm. Triple dubs. All of them. Mm. Did you see that last night, what he did? Now, I'm glad we didn't give him a grade because if I had to, we'd had to give him a grade, Skip, I probably had to give him a C plus. Mm. Cause he was at an A until he had those two turnovers late in the ball game and he didn't miss those two free throws. Mm-hmm. And I say, yeah, that, you, you turn a you turn a virtuoso mm. into a, like a, a very average performance. Mm. But Skip, in order for him to do what he's doing, because there are a lot of people that didn't think LeBron James was going to be able. Because remember, he had his first injury. Oh, the groin, and we don't know. Year 17, and he's been he's been. Every bit of the LeBron James that we know and love, and he's continued that. And I told you he's going to continue that. He hurt because I love how, you know, he had one game. Oh, he's whew, he's unathletic and yada yada yada. But now he did. He's doing this. What? Well, let it play out. Let's see what happens in the playoffs. You didn't wait then. Now, all of a sudden, everybody wants to wait to see what's going to happen down the road. When after the first game, you didn't wait. You passed your judgment. Mm-hmm. Oh, Kawhi. And they ain't seen Kawhi since. Kawhi played two games since opening night. They don't play their 14, 15 games until the season. I think he's played more than two. Okay, my bad. I, no. Okay, you know, I, I misspoke. You rounded down. He played, uh, what he played, like 10? Mm. <laughs> they got there play like 15. Mm. Come on, Skip. You see what is going on, Skip. Mm. It, just, it just shows you. And I get it. If you know you play an extended period of time, you're going to have uh, uh, put up some numbers. But to put up these numbers, to do what he's doing, that's five trip, that's five trip dubs in mm. what, 13 games, 14 games, Skip? Mm. That's pretty good, wouldn't you say? Mm. Greatness. Mm. Greatness with all those minutes, with all those finals. I know a guy ain't got that many triple dubs, mm. and he ain't played that many minutes. And he took off a year. He load managing before a year and a half, mm. and then took another load management for two years. Mm. That's none of my business. I don't even know why I brought that up. I apologize. I'm dry snitching on a man. Yeah. Mm. That had nothing to do with this. Mm. Skip Bayless, you know what this is. This is greatness personified on mm. top of greatness. And that's what he is. That's why he go. That's why he go James. Mm. That's why he's going to go down as the greatest player ever. Mm. And there's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing you can say. You can try to sway public opinion in your favor, but it ain't going to happen. I'm about to do a whole lot of <laughs> swaying right here, Ooh. right now. No, you're not. I have a whole lot to say about what happened last night at Staples Center, starting with this takeaway. Big picture. LeBron James, your man, is playing a dangerous early season game. What? Last night, he played a game high, 37 minutes. Game high. Wow. 37. Anthony also played 37. Yeah. But Anthony's a little younger than LeBron last time I checked. Yeah. Is he more doable than LeBron? I, I don't know. I'm talking about year 17 for your man. Still cooking. And we're in mid-November, and the old cliche is the NBA doesn't even start until Christmas Day, and he's playing a game-high 37 plus all 12 minutes of the fourth quarter against the lowly Thunder, now 5-9. and nine. Oh, yeah. Why did he play all 12 in the fourth quarter? It's called stat padding. Stop it, Skip. Stat padding. Why else would you do it? Do, You're up 12 points. You could just cruise home. Skip. You, do, you could let, let Quinn Cook take it let home. Me ask you Caruso a take okay, it let me home. Okay, let ask you a question. 
Do you believe they would have won the game if LeBron James did not play a minute in the fourth quarter? Yes, I do. And that is because, you know what, I'm just going to just leap right into it. I plan to do something else, but I'm going to leap oh. right into this. The truth is, goat man, <laughs> that he was almost the literal lowercase goat, as in the reason they almost blew the 12-point lead and lost in the fourth quarter to the lowly thunder because he was a fourth quarter disaster last night. If we could just count the ways, it starts with 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter. Here we go. (laughs) Watch this. Here's the first play. He drives in the lane and shoots an air. But LeBron, you're the GOAT. What are you doing? Then here's the first turnover. What are you doing? You just dribble right into traffic and lose the ball. That's a rookie play. What is that shot? That was a foul. That that was not a foul. foul. Nobody touched him. It was an air ball. Another turnover. Look at this. He just dribbles right into two guys, and here they go with the layup the other way. And then watch this. Gallinari blows by LeBron. Gallinari. That was was not a foul. Yeah, and he fouled him. He hacked him across the arm. No, he he didn't. That was a whole ball. And one free throw miss. Boop, boom. LeBrick. Mm. He LeBrick too. The first one didn't even qualify as LeBrick because it was almost an air ball free throw. It barely ticked the front of the rim. Giannis got by five. Those are your year. low lights that got completely swept under the rug yeah. last night yeah. because of the historic triple double. That was a disastrous fourth. He shot two air balls in the fourth quarter and he took nine shots in the fourth quarter. And you're, it, it's by three the most on either side. By three. He, he took the most shots in the fourth quarter. Stat. Padding. And he had the most points, Stat, too. Stat, padding. And he had the most rebounds in the LeBron fourth quarter, too. was doing humble brag after the game. Man, I didn't know about this. this he quarter. didn't know. Baloney, he, he didn't did. know. He, he didn't knows know. everything. No, he, does. No, he, he does. got the highest IQ in basketball. It's not even close. Skip, sometimes. You look, know it, skip, and I know sometimes it. Sometimes that records come up, you don't really know. You don't, Skip. I didn't mm-hmm. know that I had actually broken Jackie Smith's record until oh, I actually did it. A humble brag from Shannon Sharp. Up, <laughs> skip, you think people go into the game. Right like, on time. Skip, <laughs> thank you. Skip, you you think, just slipped that in. No, skip, do you actually think People go into a game knowing that anything they do, oh, did, did I score the most points in franchise history? Did I score the most? Did anybody ever? No. I don't think How can like I make that, my right? case I'm better than Michael Jordan? Is Wait a been, second. Here's another way. Been made. I could say I, I'm the first ever to get triple dubs against every team in it's this already league. Made. It's, already, it's oh. already done. Oh, it's already done. It I, says I, you. You're the only one in the universe who thinks can, that. Can another, company, oh, can, a, can another company come along mm. and, and be better yeah. than Apple? No. So let's talk about those yeah. triple doubles, shall we? Let's talk about them. <sighs> Russell Westbrook averaged a triple double for three straight seasons. We wish him well. Oh, it's impossibly great. Mm-hmm. It's off the charts great. And now you're telling me he's got five this year. And I'm supposed to be impressed with that? I'm, he's the point guard. Hey, I'm going to check back with Russ in year 17. Okay, and I want to remind everybody this team leads the league, they're pulling away in dunks. They got three in the top ten. All three big guys are in the top ten of dunks. Shouldn't they be? Okay, yeah, but that makes it even easier on the point guard to get easy assists. Alley-oop, dunk. Alley-oop, dunk. So what? Lob pass, dunk. So let me ask you a question. So you think they, they, they signed, they re-signed JaVale. Mm-hmm. They traded for AD. They signed uh, uh, Dwight, Dwight. Ho- Dwight mm-hmm. Howard. And for what? To shoot threes? No, no. To protect I'm the paint. I'm giving you that. And the, and hey, the, I'm just saying your degree of difficulty of triple doubles on the assist category is pretty low so, because you should get let 10 me, assists so, a game. So let me ask you a question. If you're going to play 37 minutes, you should have how, 10 assists. How, how, many of those, how many of those triple doubles that Russ had did he dump the ball off to Stephen Adams? A whole lot it? of them. Okay. That's what he did. Okay. He only had one guy. And by the way, before I leave Stephen Adams alone, did you see what happened early in the game? You know, you're always telling me about chase down blocks. I don't know if we have this play or not. Oh, here it is. We do have it. Steven Adams goes up and LeBron olays him. Why didn't he just chase him down and block it? Mm. Why didn't he block it? He let him go because he won't pick on somebody his own size. What do I? Bielitsa is like 6'10 ground bound with semen shoes what, on. What about, Nur- what about Nurkic? Huh? Nurkic, Nurkic ground bound. We looking semen for semen shoes. They ain't seen him. Yeah. Filed a missing, rep- uh, missing person report on him uh, like two okay. years ago. Oh, he did that too. Yeah. Oh, LeBron you ain't seen hurt Nurkic. Him. Oh, so LeBron hurt <laughs> Nurkic's knee, I yeah. guess. Oh, and Sarich has been to like three or four trying really? to He's steal away from LeBron. He's just done. Yep. Okay, so you had a chance to show me something. Go up and contest Steven Adams at the rim because you got a chance. You got a big chase down. You could go up and just make him eat it. What, what and he olayed. What, he gave up. What about your guy from the Spurs? You remember oh. in the finals oh. when he blocked this dunk? What was your big guy name, Skip? Yeah. You know that was your big guy name. Tiago Spurs. Yeah, I mean, Tiago yeah. You know, uh, you, all these Euros who, who are highly skilled, but they can't jump. 
They're we'll big, uh, seven-foot white guys. You can pick on them like crazy. Except here's here's one from New Zealand. We're gonna right? get you. I told okay. you. Yeah. yeah. Why why didn't you block his shot? We got him. We got him tonight. Yeah. So we got him tonight. We're gonna posterize back him to tonight. The triple doubles. Mm. Russell Westbrook would have set this record because True. he got his first chance ever to set this record on October 28th of this year. It was his third game with his only his second team he's ever played yep. for. His brand new teammates, the Houston Rockets, played the Thunder in Houston on October 28th. Game three. And what did Russ do? 21 points, 12 rebounds, nine assists. Did he do it? Nine assists. Gonna hit it. Ah. Yeah. Nine just assists. Just he just he just was one assist shy, and LeBron you. wouldn't have the who, record. Who, who gives credit for being the first man to set foot on the moon? Mm-hmm. Neil Armstrong or Glenn? Well, according to you, LeBron James does. Yeah. Right. So in other words, LeBron did it first. Yes. Neil Armstrong is the first man yeah. to set foot on the moon. Yep. So I don't know who came two seconds after him. Oh. He wasn't first. Okay. I, keep, skip, wait, I keep telling you, you mm. first or you last. Okay. LeBron is first. Okay, well... All-time Oscar, Oscar Robertson, has 181 triple-doubles, but Russell Westbrook is starting to close ground. He's 141. Yeah. LeBron's way down at 86. 86. So he's 55 shy of little Russell Westbrook, he's little 50, 6'3". You know what? He might be 55 uh, shy of Russ, but I tell you who he's not 55 shy of. Uh. <laughs> I know who he's not. Guess what, Skip? Uh. He's 55 ahead of your guy. Who's my guy? And Mike. Oh, well, he he just scored it, man. Wait, what are we doing? And and he played defense. Is it, hold on. Listen. Have we passed him in scoring? No Gallinari would ever blow by Michael Jordan on the perimeter with the game on the line Le- to cut the score to two points. LeBron for Smith cooked Michael Ooh. Jordan for 36. Oh, uh, and then what happened? Well, he told him that I'm going to get 37 and a half. <laughs> <laughs> and he did. Yeah, he got thank 30. you. Thank you. <laughs> So, can you believe Gallinari just blew by LeBron Skip. with the game on the line to cut it to two? Skip, we won. Ooh, Skip. I, I thought he was defending at a high level. And we still there. Okay. You see that steal huh. where he shot the gap yeah. on him and huh. took it to the house? You saw that? You remember that? You still want to wear that goat mask today? Yeah! Do you? Triple dub. Really? Leading the league in assists. Yeah. Fourth quarter nightmare. 25. Really? Skip, you know we are. 25, 8, and 11. That's what we are, Skip. Mm. That's it. Let that sink in for a second. So I, I just want to make sure. Mm-hmm. Are you comfortable in saying James Harden in year 17, he's in year 11 now, mm-hmm. will be averaging 35, 40? Like he is not. <laughs> LeBron James ain't dropped off. I don't even care. Yeah. This is only about LeBron. Go. Mm. Dangerous ain't, game ain't he's no playing. Danger. Do, do you remember? I mean, do, do you have any idea how, how long these seasons feel? Because we're just in November, and we're going to be talking about your man LeBron day after morning after morning after morning. I can't wait to criminal okay. day. How many have we played now? 16? Are we up to 16 games? I think we what? We 12? 12 and 2. We 12 and 2. 14, 14 games. In. 14. Okay, four, only 14 games. 14. Most teams have played 15. Yeah. Okay, so they're 14 we in. We go 15 tonight. Okay, 15's tonight. It's 82 games. Is he going to play all 82 we might. and stay healthy? That's what we get paid for. 37 when I, minutes? When I signed up. Really? I didn't sign up to take uh, uh, six weeks off. Yep. I signed up to come every day to work hey, to bust you he up. he wants to play. That's what I do. It's They're like, man, you come every, every day. You know what? If I'm Jeannie Buss or Rob Polink, I'm sitting back right now thinking, you know what? We got to just pull the reins back in a little bit on him. No, no, no. We well, need him well, first of all, healthy and fresh for the playoffs. Hey, right? Je- Jeannie, hmm. you remember last year Jeannie Buss was thinking about his training? Hmm. Oh. You remember that? I brought up our own rebuke is up right there. Drama. So now yeah, she want to pull the reins back when she thought about getting rid of her. She better like, leave Braun alone. They're well. too happy the way things are going for them. They're going good. Remember how bad Sta- things were at one Staple, point last year? Staple is sold out again. Mm. The buzz, the electricity. Can you imagine? I Let's just say for the sake back. of argument, LeBron James was load managing. Mm-hmm. And they were seven and five, like another team that plays in that very building. Oh, I, People would be outraged. Skip Bay was like, how could you do that? I told you, he came to be Michael B. Jordan, mm. not Michael J. Jordan. Mm. That's what you would say. Mm. But I know a guy that's sitting on his couch about, ooh, you know, I, I, I stepped on an acorn and my knee a little sore. Mm. That's what he doing. Mm. But my guy played. My guy play every night. My guy's going to be ready for May and June. Oh, he's your guy now. You're saying oh, he's your guy. He's December. always my guy. Uh, this you, you, whole new thing with know, him being your guy, I'm yeah, still getting used to it. But I got to tell you, he was my guy long before he was, your guy was your guy. And I'll well, give you that. Well, how, well I'm talking about how, how did he hurt his knee with this orthopedic New Balance on? 
Oh. They give you great stability. Hey, you've been wearing them. Have you had any problems? I wore them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He don't want to hurt his knees. I, Just the I'm, one time. Hey, I'm through and through. I know. MJ. MJ forever. Till I die. Ride you. or die with I went Michael Jordan. I'm riding out on Braun James. Okay. Oh, Clearly. Yeah, I, 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 I rock the James. Clearly. Can we put this away for that one? No mercy. We're moving on to Dak Prescott. He is on pace for a record year. He is only two touchdowns away from his career high. He leads the NFL in yards per attempt as well as passing yards per game. If he stays on pace, he would be the first Cowboy to ever lead the league in passing yards. Dak's 841 yards the last two games is also the most in consecutive games in Cowboys history. Shannon. Those numbers are pretty good. Uh, how much stock do you put in these stats? That much. Hmm. Okay. Zero. What? Yeah, not much at all, Jenny. Not Zero? much at all. Yeah, because guess what? He's getting all these yards because he put his his team in a hole in the first half. Hmm. Now, if I'm not mistaken, he had three points at the half at New Orleans. If I'm not mistaken, he had three points also at the half against the Jets. And he had another three points. Who did they play skip? I Green Bay. Oh. Ooh. Green Bay. Mm. Now, Skip Bayless would tell you to have it. He passed for 300 and, no, 463 yards. But I'm going to give you a little inside stat, Jenny. Okay. 323 of the 463 came when the Cowboys were trailing by more than 14 points. Mm -hmm. That was the second half. Skip Bayless. 323 and a half is hard to do. I'm talking. It's my turn. Mm. (laughs) Did you know that the Jets game, 94 yards. He had passed for 94 yards in the first 29 minutes. They were down mm-hmm. 21-3. So in other words, garbage. That's what he do is get empty calories again. I keep telling you, working out hard, and you stop by and you get you a, get you a scone <laughs> and one of them old frosty, one of them old mm. uh, uh, frappuccinos yeah, or them ice so lattes. They taste all so you've good. done, all you do, empty calories. All you've done is everything that you've done, you've nullified it mm. by eating that. That's my problem. That's the problem, Skip. That, that's, that, yeah. that's his problem mm. with his guy. <laughs> Give, I need, Skip, I need something meaningful. Mm. I need, Skip, see, my, I'm the type of guy... If I ask you, Skip, you go into the store, yeah. Mm. Can you get me some cigarettes and, 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 and some beer? You, it, that's what you want? No, that's not saying, at all what you want. I'm just saying, Skip, can you get me some cigarettes and, 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 and a case, up. And a case of beer? And you, come, and you come back with toilet paper and cups. Mm. That ain't what I asked for. You deserve you toilet get, paper. <laughs> Skip, you and I both know, yes, he's leading the league in passing. Mm. But if my homeboy that got hurt against Denver only passed for 76 yards, he would be averaging 341 mm. a game. So you and I both know. It's Skip, this means nothing. Your guy is number one in QBR. Yards per attempt. Kirk Cousins is third. That's what I'm going to hear though there. Okay. And he got another stat. QBR, yards per attempt, and passing yards per game. And all he got to show for it is six and four. Skip, mm. them empty calories. You know that. I need something. Now, I'm going to tell you what he can do. Now, if he goes on and he goes out there and he plays. Now, he needs to play well. Not Tom Brady plays bad. But he need to go head to head with old big Tom Terrific. Mm-hmm. And they need to lock up. He do that, Skip. I'm going to come in here on Monday and say, Skip, your boy, he owned us up. Well, it's going to be hard to give him a better grade than you gave him last Monday because you said A++ for his game at Detroit. Yes, yeah, but you do know this. Against the Lions. Yeah. Okay. But you know the thing is about grades, we take tests often. Mm-hmm. Especially if you play football. You take them every week. And I get an opportunity to give you another grade. So he got an A++ on that last test. Okay, against the defense, I believe they were ranked 25th overall. That, okay, the Detroit Lions. Now he's going up against the number one defense. Wouldn't you grade him on a curve? No, instead? we'll do no curve. Is it possible no. to give somebody an A++++++? How many pluses can you put on there? He go at, he, if he goes out there and do what you think he can do, mm-hmm. I will grade him accordingly. Nothing more, nothing less. Hmm. So, I would like to read the first line of Todd Archer's piece, ESPN.com. Dallas Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott's numbers are getting ridiculous now. Getting ridiculous. They're surreal. They're off the charts. Every time I open my computer or my phone, I see another story about another stat I did not know. The Joe Montana stat is startling Stop it. His his name should not be mentioned with Joe Montana, Tom Brady, and Peyton Manning ever. Stop. Not since Joe Montana has any quarterback who's played since Joe Montana, that was a long time ago, has had four games of at least 375 yards passing with two touchdowns in each of those games through the first 10. 
I, that's a stat, man. I mean, that's that's one you should honor. You should say, nobody's done that? Joe probably wasn't behind by 28 at one point. Hmm. Joe probably wasn't behind by 18 at one point. Hmm. And I can assure you, Joe Montana scored more than 10 points. So, one last time I'm going to say this. Leads the league in QBR. Leads the league in passing yards. Leads the league in yards per attempt. This is the man across from me who for three years has ridiculed and discredited my quarterback for dinking and dacking. Yep. And now he is wheeling and dealing. Okay. He's throwing it farther than anybody in the league. And yet his receiving core, it, they were tied for second in drops last week. Now they're only tied for third in drops this week. So they improved slightly, just slightly at Detroit. Mm -hmm. Tied for third in drops. Mm -hmm. So you can't run the ball. A lot of times your receivers don't Skip, consistently they hang on. They haven't, they haven't run the ball well the last two weeks. They can and run. They are, they're running back, $50 million guaranteed, is eighth in rushing. Mm -hmm. So you don't have a dependable running game that you can hang your helmet on every week. You don't have what you used to have. The degree of difficulty for this man is off the charts. The defense can't stop the run. His defense can't stop the run or the pass or take the ball away. That they're down at the tied for 24th in, in takeaways. So help me out here. Okay. It's all Dak or bust. And anybody else, anybody else except Dak Prescott would be right in the middle of the MVP race. But you can disqualify him because you say, well, he's six and four. Six and four. They're six and four only because of the quarterback. And the reason he's not in the MVP race is because he has a terminally tarnished reputation. I don't care what you say. He's been doing this for four years. No, stop it. Consistently for four years. Okay, the first three years, he led the whole league in game-winning drives over the first three years. You, you have to, you, you got to give it up because I've been beating this desk for him yep. since he was a rookie. I, I came out here on opening day of Undisputed, September 6th of 2016, yep. and I said, I saw something in game number two at the Coliseum of the preseason. I saw this raw rookie from Mississippi State look like a poised, polished starting quarterback. Didn't I tell you that? I yes. said right away. Yeah. And I have beaten his drum ever since, and you've just beaten on his head. And it's forced me to, to say this is the most baffling development I've ever seen in my whole career because Dak Prescott remains the most over-criticized, under-appreciated quarterback I've ever covered. I, I think he goes down in NFL history where he just keeps putting up numbers mm -hmm. that, are, that are startling, but nobody will give in to the numbers. But look at, look at what Russ is doing. Look at what Lamar okay. is doing. He okay, so Russell has pass. 22 touchdown passes, yeah, right? Yeah, how many picks? Okay, Dak's got 21 touchdown passes. How many picks? Okay, but, How but many, again, he, he's put in desperate situations week after week. He's trying to throw he them out of holes. He no, he didn't. There. Yeah, he did. Nope, sorry. Well, what about Lamar? What are we going to no. do with Lamar? We okay, well, I, I love Lamar. Yeah. And, and again, I just think it should be a three-man race at this and, point. And it's a two-man race. Okay, well, you're right because nobody's going to give this guy any credit. They're we just give, not. We give him credit, Skip. We can't, Skip, you throw for – it's like a guy scoring 50 and they lose by 30. He's got all those yards against Green Bay. Skip, they were down, they were down by more than 14. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me throw a career stat at you. May I? Yes. Dak Prescott is now only the fourth quarterback in NFL history to open his career with 3,000 yards and 20 touchdowns in each of his first four seasons. The others are Peyton, Russell Wilson, and Derek Carr. But only three others have done that. And I know you say Derek Carr. Yeah, still, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well you, you should have kept that statement. You know, I think Derek Carr's been pretty underrated. He's having a really good year this year. Yeah, yeah. Having a really good year. Yeah, yeah. Having a good year. You, so. Hey, I'll let you. Okay. But have you had Russ and Peyton? The, consistently on, on this show, I wish we had a montage of all the times you said he just can't throw. I, He's I, not consistently I'll try to find accurate. It. Thank you. Okay. But it, it, it boils down to he just can't throw the football well enough to be. A, a star quarterback in no, this league. No, Troy says he struggled he with did. his accuracy. He did. He said it last year. Yes. Okay? So, a lot of people have. Okay. And, and I'm saying I'm missing something here. Yeah. You do realize that in sports, I do what they call, you can get an opportunity to update your resume. Mm -hmm. So he's updating his resume. Now, guess what? I gave, him a, I gave him a test last week. He passed it. Granted, it was easy. Spell cat, spell dog, what color is purple. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that, Jenny. Yeah. You know, just spell sun. Should have no problem. Now he got advanced trigonometry. Mm. Yes. Mm. 
quantum physics. AP. Solve. Ooh. I need you to solve the quantum mm. theory. Mm. What is Bill Belichick's defense? Mm. And okay. if you can do that. All right, that's fair. I'll buy that. But I'm going to go back one more time to last year. Last 10 games last year, he led this whole league in completions. Hard to do if you can't throw and you're inaccurate. Hard to do. And yet he did that. He keeps doing that. He outplayed Russell Wilson. You look at the QBRs in the playoff Russell game. Russell Wilson. And like he beat tell, him. Like and he you, beat him. Like you tell me, Russell Wilson plays safety? Mm. No. Well, it was 24 to 22. It wasn't like they got torn up on defense. Yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. And guess what? Russ and Lamar uh-huh. and nobody else. Well, all I know is Russ better have an MVP game this Sunday yeah. because he's playing at Philadelphia. Oh, the, you By know the way, that's all your Eagles about. are only a 1.5 point favorite at home. That's not a lot. A you know what's getting better? You think you're slick. He needs to play like the MVP well, this week. We better. It, a, hey, you, you hey if he wins Sunday, I'll just give him the MVP. You know, exactly. He can have it. Because we, we already got ulterior motives. Mm. We know what this is about. I know. You wanted to beat the Eagles, mm. so help your For Cowboys. Sure. Yeah. Duh. But well, guess what? It ain't going to happen. Mm. You're feeling good? Really? really? Real good. Really? Like Walk until him, go have a bounce back game. Really? Yeah. Right. Bounce it to him, he's going to have a bounce back You Ho- keep saying Ho- it. Hopefully Aguilar put some crazy glue on his hands. Yeah. He can catch. Some good okay. games this week. Can we just yeah. talk about the rating that I'm expecting, Cowboys-Patriots? That mm. game. And we got it's it. Gonna break. I we like got it. It's not that work. It's a big deal. We got Russell Wilson at Eagles. This is a big week. We got a double header. Oh, my Lord. No mercy. Mello Anthony started in his Blazers debut last night against the Pelicans. Mello finished with 10 points, four boards, and uh, four assists, but unfortunately it was a minus 20. But despite the 11-point loss, the future Hall of Famer said it felt good to be back on the court. So, Shannon, did you like what you saw from Mello last night? Skip, he gave me what I thought he would. Mm. Thought he'd play somewhere around 20 minutes. Yep. Mello, he is a guy that can get buckets. He scored 10 points. But you can see there's a difference between putting up shots in a gym by yourself mm. yep. and playing in an NBA game. As the game wore on, he wore down, and his shot like, wow, he started looking like the guy that was in OKC, looking like the guy that was in Houston, Skip. Yep. People don't realize he also had a stop in Atlanta. He had a stop in Chicago. He didn't, you know, he just laid over. Quick he didn't stops. really stop. He laid over. Uh He's got to get his legs back under him, Skip. And it's probably going to take two or three weeks. Like I said, he's been off for a year. A year. I mean, think about that. He wanted to keep playing. No one said no. uh, And no one was willing to, you know, take him on. And, you know, Portland got desperate. Uh, But, Skip, Portland doesn't need scoring. They got Dame. Dame Dame and CJ can either get you 50 on a given night. Dame can get you 30 on most nights. Mm. They can't stop anybody. And guess what? (laughs) The mellow that we know and love, Skip. Had doubled to everybody else plus minus, mm. minus 20, in 24 minutes with four fouls. Mm-hmm. Skip, skip. Melo is what he is. I, I love Melo. I used to go to the Nuggets game, have my Melo jersey on. <laughs> mm. As a matter of fact, someone sent me a video, Skip. Really? I was sitting courtside when LeBron came to play Melo at the Pepsi Center in Denver. Would have I had a Melo jersey on? Mm. Uh oh. Yeah. Blasphemy. Hey, what, no, what you think I'm going to go to? You actually video. think I'm going to go to a Nuggets game. If, if, if you had the courage of your nah, I ain't got no, I ain't got no, 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 no. Okay. Let's go. This is a get, new relationship. <laughs> yeah. Building yeah, we had to years. build. Yeah, he had to grow on oh, me. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get, look, I hope that Melo can. Skip, it was, hard. it was just hard for a guy that wants to play and no, no other superstars had to go through this. No other superstars had to go through what Melo, wanting to play and be done, be out of the game for a year, gets called back. And everybody from LeBron to KD to Kyrie and everybody like, man, man, Melo can still play. Melo can still play. It's almost like they're lobbying and politicking for him to get back on a team. And he had to go through this. I just wish him the best. I just don't know. Is there anything that he can do to change the way people perceive Melo? I don't think so, Skip. And I don't think it's going to be much better than what happened in OKC and in Houston when it's all said and done. Mm. So you can accuse me if you want of uh, going soft on this, but I'm just being honest. My heart hasn't been warmed the way it was last night for a long time. Mm -hmm. It just did my heart good just to see him in an NBA uniform, in an NBA game, on my TV, right. to the point for the first couple of minutes, I was like, am I seeing a ghost here? Mm. Mm-hmm. Is, is this some replay game? Or what, what, what is it, <laughs> a flashback game? Because all I've been reading about is he's been playing at some gym in New York against guys on their lunch hour. That's what he's been yes. doing for the last year. Yes. Guys on their lunch hour. 
Oh, yeah, you want to play? Yeah, you Oh, yeah, I'm in the league. Right. I'm playing <laughs> <laughs> I play against Melo. I'm playing against Melo at go. noon. Gotta go. Can't be late. Oh, at noon. Yeah. <laughs> it's great stuff. This was about to be the saddest story in the history of the league when it comes to conclusions of careers because he deserved better than what was about to happen to him. Yep. And we both said we were shocked that Portland gave him a, sh- a shot. Mm-hmm. Do I think he can help Portland? Maybe a little, definitely not a lot. I know all the raps on him from the past. He's a ball stopper who doesn't make his teammates better. I get that. But I've been around him several times, and, and I got to tell you, I just like him. Mm-hmm. And LeBron loves him true, like, oh, like yeah. it's from the heart. He's yeah. And CP3 it. and Dwayne and those guys, they just love him. KD, they love him. They love him. Love him. He's a good guy. Mm-hmm. He, he's, he's mellow. Mm-hmm. And he will shoot it. And he came out last night and took their first two shots. Like, like I never left, man. He, he hit that three. <laughs> he hit a three. Mm-hmm. He missed the first one. Then he made a three. And I was like, that's big time. Yeah. He, he had participated in one walkthrough with this team. And to your point, there's no way his legs are NBA <laughs> right <laughs> yet. No. Will they ever be? There was one play against that Jackson Hayes kid from Texas that they drafted. He's seven feet tall and can just jump out of the gym. I think he's going to be really good. And Melo, I think we have this, tried to go up against him. And I was like, Melo, don't. Don't. But at least he tried. That's gumption, man. That's thinking I'm still Melo. Yeah. And and at least he tried. And they asked Jackson Hayes after the game. He said, well, he just showed his passion. I think Jackson Hayes was, like, shocked that he went at him. I don't know if he's trying to dunk it or just draw the foul. but, But he tried. And yet, I didn't see much lift, and maybe we won't see much lift the rest of the year. But Portland is different than, than the star power that he joined in Oklahoma City and Houston. That's just me. It's different. It feels right. different because Damon and CJ are very good. I don't consider either one of them what I would call a superstar, but they're both really good at what they do off radar right. up in Portland. So I, I think, think Dame, I think Dame's a superstar. Okay, well we can go back and forth, but I haven't seen superstar in the postseason right. except he made one shot against Russ at Oklahoma. Well, City. you saw what he did against OKC. He was uh, he was skip. He was dynamic okay, that whole series. I saw what he didn't do against Golden State. Yeah, he but didn't that's close. Okay. He didn't close. He's I don't right. want to get into that right now, but I do think that Dame and CJ look at Melo a little bit more as a big brother. Mm-hmm. So I think his presence in their locker room, and I read bits and pieces like the the locker room has been a little divided. I don't know what the, there's some tension in the locker room where they don't get along all that well. And maybe Melo can help mm-hmm. unify the locker room. Maybe he can give them some, some big guy presence mm-hmm. because he can't play big guy basketball anymore right. like he used to. He's not going to lead the league in scoring. He might lead the league, league in shots. shots. Him, but, <laughs> yeah. but, but the point is, I just like the fit. And I like the idea that he's going to get to end it right. This will be, and I assume this will be his last year, but I don't even know that. Mm. Right. But if it is, at least he's going to go out to me in a much better way than he was about to go out. Yeah, yeah, because like I said, we've never seen a superstar. And Carmelo was a superstar, 10-time All-Star, yeah. won uh, uh, gold medals. Led the uh, league. Yeah, led the league in scoring. I mean, finished second to LeBron in MVP. And got you one. made the point in, in that one last run with Team USA. Yeah. Well, he, he was, was the man. Yeah. And he's always had a, he's always been unbelievable. And for for whatever reason, Skip, he felt comfortable coming off the bench. Yeah. And and uh, and the uh, All Star game, the All Star game, in the Olympics. Yeah. But Skip, I just, it's just it's it's sad because I remember what he was at his apex, watching him in Denver for those years and seeing him early in his career with the Knicks, and to see this, it was almost like people, like I said, people lobbying and politicking him, and he's like. They ask him. He's like, yeah, I'm shocked I'm not playing. Yeah, I'm shocked I'm not in the league. And to see him finally get a chance, I I, I hope he can cash in on mm-hmm. his skill. I hope he can find some peace. Like, okay, mm-hmm. my time is up in no, the NBA, I, I and got I got to get opportunity to go out okay. on my terms. And I loved what he said after the game. Yeah. Did my heart good that he said – it was it was great just to go to the pregame meal because yeah. he missed the, the you know how that feels yes yeah. team lunch yeah. locker yeah. room yeah that's what you miss the simple thing like simple these are simple that's what you miss mm-hmm. you miss part of it yeah. not all of it but no nah, don't miss the meetings it's almost yeah. like he missed the meetings and you said when you stopped wanting to go to the meetings you knew it was over yeah, yeah. so the guy clearly still has the drive all I wanted to be a all part I wanted to do was like the hour that we got in the locker room. The stretching and the practice. That's all I want to do. Yeah. I mean, I could, could, they, could, they, could they pay me to do that? I ain't want to play in the games no more either. Uh-huh. You let me come here, tell jokes, joke with the guys, have a good time, mm-hmm. make fun of people, and I can go home. 
That so is a now you the first do. time you miss our 4 a.m. meeting, I should oh. know that's it. <laughs> well, no. No, 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 no. No, we already worked out. We working out. We working out. Of, you know, we working out of an addendum. Oh, what like, does that mean? Certain Tuesdays, I get you know get what? off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd like to be a part of that. A no, no, no. You, you, need, you, need, you, need, I mean, you need no, to, you need to be here to, you know, get your notes okay. right. 4 a.m. Well, I think Skip, you're uh, really you're on a tight ship meetings. around here. I think you've been great. <laughs> yeah, you, I mean, you seem to be locked in. And I, I'm, ready I'm, to go. I'll be locked in. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm up. I, after four hours of sleep, I'm yeah. good. I'm oh. great. Oh, yeah. I need a few more than four. But either way, <laughs> look, he's happy to be back. And if he can find some joy in this and peace and, you know, help yes. the team out, it's, it's a win, no right? Mercy. While the Patriots' offense has been less than stellar this season, some have questioned whether Father Time is finally catching up with the 42-year-old Tom Brady, <laughs> Shannon, who publicly admitted that he has been frustrated this year. Hall of Famer Brett Favre weighed in and came to Brady's defense yesterday. Take a listen. And for whatever reason, the Patriots are just, you know, they're, they're not clicking on offense. And it's not a result of... Tom being in his 40s, um, it, it, it's timing. Maybe the offensive line, they've had a f few uh, changes there. And he, he, he's feeling a little bit of pressure from one side versus the other. And it's just, it's just not right right now. But I, I think it's way too soon to write them off. And I think it's a, absurd to, to mention age right now uh, as a factor and why they're struggling. All right, Shannon. Oh. Do you agree with Favre's assessment of Brady and the Patriots' offense? No, because it's Tom Brady. And no one wants to admit that Tom Brady play is falling off. And quarterbacks will never criticize. It's very rarely mm -hmm. that quarterbacks will criticize other quarterbacks publicly, especially that. great quarterbacks. Skip, it's okay that Tom Brady's play has fallen off. It happens to everybody. You see, what has happened here is that when he plays well, you got to remember, Jenny, he's doing this at 40. When he doesn't play well, maybe he's getting pressure from somewhere. They're not running the football. He needs some help at receivers. We make every excuse. But when he's playing well, Tom Brady is doing this at 42. Nobody mentioned anything about the line. Mm -hmm. Nobody mentioned that they can't run the football. Nobody mentioned about the receivers he may or may not have. It's only when he's struggling. I tell you, this is what I'm going to do. Here's a guy. His name is uh, Patrick Kicklider. He plays quarterback in the NFL, and he's 25th in yards per attempt. Uh -huh. He's 19th in completion percentage. He's 17th in touchdown passes. He's 14th in QBR. His name is Patrick Quicklider. You got everybody's gonna say he's an average quarterback. Hmm. But when you say the guy that possessed these numbers is Tom Brady. Whoa, the offensive line. It's the offensive line. And Sonny Michelle has not been Sonny Michelle. Maybe he's in the doghouse. And I thought Nikhil Harry was going to come along and be Randy Moss. Because you remember Randy Moss' first game in the NFL. Woo! Nah, Skip. Hmm. It happens to everybody. Hmm. Watch him on that rollout. How it's like, it feel like you're walking on hot coals. Hmm. Who it hurt. Mm -hmm. Skip, it's okay. Father time. Trust me, I eat well, and I'm not in the NFL, and I train my butt off. But it's hard. He coming. Mm. I keep, Skip, I, I get back, man. Dang, let me take this photo <laughs> before the time. Oh, he'll cast a shadow. And get every time. Get back, man. Dang, give me He's a just second. creeping. Can, can I get a second? Let me take this photo. <laughs> Ooh, skip what I'm working with right here. Mm. Ah. Skip, mm. you see it. It's okay, Skip. The man has had a career unlike any other professional football player in the history of the game. It's okay that his play starts to slip. Mm. It's going to slip. Mm. I told you it was going to slip. Mm -hmm. And that's you what told me three years ago, two years ago, and last year. Uh, I, and you were wrong, wrong, and wronger. Okay, let me ask you this. So you're doing it again. Let me ask you this. Through the first mm. nine, ten weeks of the mm -hmm. season, are they winning games because of Tom Brady? It's a simple question. Uh, several of them they have. I, I can go back chapter and verse and show you. Pittsburgh. Yep. Okay. So, there are two kinds of excuses in the world. There are bogus excuses, not deserved, and there are legit, completely deserved. There's no such thing so, as legit excuses. So, are you saying that excuses are all bogus, that, like they're, they're not deserved? I had to take them off the menu. Are there legit excuses? Are there certain things that, that you would qualify as a legit reason for this decline. Before I got into the restaurant business, I was in the excuse business. Mm. But I went belly up because nobody wanted to hear it. Okay. Yeah. Either That's you true. did or you didn't. 
Well, there's a lot of Brady hate out there, and everybody for oh about goodness. five years have been on the edge of their seat, ready to jump and say, that's it, he's washed up. He's the washed king. No, he's not, and I'm going to dig in one more time and tell you, you better be careful. We have seen him last year. They had four or five horrendously bad games around him and including him. You know what they were. They looked horrible last year, and all they did was win the Super Bowl. So these are what I call legit excuses. In Tom Brady's 20 years in this league, he's never thrown more passes to more different receivers than he has this year. Is that an excuse? That 17 different receivers he's had to throw to, including Gunnar Oshevsky. He targeted Gunnar Oshevsky. It came to that for Tom Brady. And obviously he doesn't have Gronk and he doesn't have A.B. after that momentary bliss that Tom experienced with A.B. And then there's no more Josh Gordon. And all of a sudden, Nikhil Harry, their first round pick, got hurt. He played his first game of the year as a rookie Mm -hmm. last year in the cold and the wind in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And he had little to no impact on the game. Are those excuses? Mohamed Sanu's been there a couple of weeks, and they don't seem to have real rapport or Sanu can't really separate from anybody. Are those excuses? Yes, they're legit excuses. No such thing. Yeah, legit. They are ranked 24th in running the football, and their line is ranked 14th, which is not very good, in pass protection by Pro Football Focus. That is a recipe for disaster. I have said from the start, Tom Brady outside the pocket is a disaster. He looks worse than he did running the 40 in at the combine. Oh, you saw that on the roll out in Philly? Well, in fact, we got about three of them here. Oh, you saw that? Oh, you saw that? Let's see these. Oh, my God. This is Tom Brady out of the pocket, and then we'll get to the reason why he's out of the pocket. Look at this. Roll right, roll right, almost a pick. Should have been a pick. Okay, roll. This is an escape right, escape right. Look at this. Look at it limping. Look at that. Yep. And this is a roll right. This is an escape right, actually. And he just says, I got to get rid of the football. Is that, a, is that considered a throwaway? Because Brett, you know, that's because a, a big a throwaway okay. because you're yeah. under. Well, should you do that or take the sack? Oh, I think oh, you should throw Aaron Rodgers. Should you yeah. throw the ball away or take a sack? Yeah. But go ahead, Skip. You're making some. shattered the record for throwaways because if he doesn't love it and he says, eh, that could be a pick. Kind of like Tom Brady. Like Tom Brady no, didn't love what he saw right there and threw it away. Okay. His left tackle is named Marshall Newhouse, or at least it was his left tackle because Isaiah Wynn just got activated. So Isaiah Wynn has been IR with a, on IR with a toe injury, and he was the 23rd overall pick two years ago. Isaiah Wynn has been healthy for two total games in his pro career, and against the Dallas Cowboys this Sunday at 425 Eastern in Foxborough, he is going to be the starter left tackle. Will that change Tom Brady's life? It just might because Marshall Newhouse is on his seventh pro football team. Right. Marshall Newhouse gives you little or no time from your blind side to throw the football. At least Isaiah Wynn as the 23rd overall, I'll bet you he'll give Tom at least one second more of peace in the pocket. Because as Brett Favre went on to say in the remarks he said on his, is it Sirius XM show, yeah. I think? Mm-hmm. He said that Tom Brady is the greatest pocket passer in NFL history. And the truth is, that's true. It, it's well, not well, even there's close. There's no okay. debating that. But okay. you, what you, what so, you try what, to do. Okay, why was he bolting to his right? Because he knows Marshall Newhouse can't stand up over on the left side of his line. In the back of his mind, you can say he's seeing ghosts or whatever you want to say. He just knows, you better get out of here. And there are two or three other plays. They called rolled rights for Tom Brady. I've never seen that. Josh McDaniels is calling rollouts for a guy who can't roll out because he can't stand in the pocket or he's going to get crushed well, from his blind well, side. Well, you can't roll him left, Skip, because okay. he can't open his hips and swivel. Okay. Well, he can't throw like you that. You want to roll left into Marshall Newhouse? No, no, Skip. Come on. There, there's, there's a way you can do that. You can mm. put the end, you can put the tight end there, crash that side okay, down and roll you, him out. You want him to throw across his body? No, you want him to throw with his body. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But my homeboy, I see Dak do it. I see Russell Wilson do it. Yeah. I see Lamar Jackson do you, it. Skip. You, you, you're talking about the greatest thrower of the football ever, the greatest passer ever is that guy. But he's not that yeah. now. Yeah. You can oh, basically, I you, think he can be. No, no, no. If skip. you just give him another second, skip. and it's, skip. watch what happens. Skip. Brett mm-hmm. doesn't want to tell. Mm. Tom Brady's going through exactly what Brett went through. Mm. You remember when Brett had that historic season? He almost got to the Super Bowl, and then he stepped off a cliff? No, why did he step across off the cliff? Because he took an unholy beating in the Bounty Gate Bowl. Remember that? I get all that. that. They said, Peter King said after the game, Brett couldn't even get up off the training table to walk to the bus. They had to help him to the bus. Yeah. And he never recovered, because you can't. Yeah. If you take yeah. that kind of beating... 
Tom's taken some shots, but he hasn't taken those kind of no, shots. but he's 42. Yep. And he gets harder and harder mm. to recover. Recoverability is one of the great things that suffer mm. as we start to age. Sure. You hear people say, Skip, ooh, man, these old bones. I need, hey, hey old Shay, got me some liniment. You know Rub what? on me, get on that bike. Oh. Mm. Hey, <laughs> I, I, I still run a lot of miles, and I'm doing just fine. Do they do it just I'm fine? I'm way older Let me ask you a question. Can, yep. you run, can, you, can Skip Bayless run the times that he did at 25, 35, 40? Why not? I'm close. I ain't no close. I'm close. Want to come run with me Hold on up. Sunday? No, I'm I, I shove you out hills right across the street. I, I, run. I got an eight mile course. We I can don't run. run. I don't run. And we I can bet. So we can bet a hundred cases of diet. I do. don't run, Skip. Okay. I don't run. Yep. <laughs> I, what, 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 I'll what, do the first mile. What, with what, you. What, okay. How about that? No, 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 Skip. I don't run. I'm just <laughs> saying, Skip. It, you can do it. Skip. You can beat it. No. He is shattering. No. The you can't beat it. Yeah. Because every time he he in the shadow sometimes, Jen. You don't see old father time, but you know I have to filter him out because he coming. He's relentless. Mm. Tom is doing everything in his power to avoid it. We know he's taking care of everything in that. What do these numbers say? I know. Numbers say average. And his lack of social numbers media. Numbers say no running game, no well, set. You, hey, you, going Jenny, on. you remember the first three weeks? Hi, guys. Another great win. That's what it's I think always is telling. great to win. Where's that? You, know, you he, still winning. I agree with that. He had posted I agree. the video this after is significant. every win. Yeah. That's a significant yeah. development. Yeah. He has been moping all week, yeah. and I don't love it. Yeah. But That's he's not moping good. because he's saying, my coach is not getting me. No, 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 no. Help. Do you see? You see? Mm -hmm. Tom Brady plays bad. Coach Belichick didn't get him help. The offensive line, they can't run. Mm -hmm. Skip, it's okay. Mm. Tom Brady okay, is I average want you, right now. I, I want to hear, is Tom Brady washed up? Is this the end of him? Tom Brady is average quarterback right mm. now, and this is his last year in New England. Mm. Why should it, shouldn't it be his last year in the NFL then? If somebody, if somebody, Skip, he's Tom Brady. Oh. If somebody else wants him oh. to sell tickets and help, maybe help them win, but Coach Belichick is going to move on. Okay. I think Mr. Kraft is not ready to move. Okay. We don't no mercy. Right. So LeBron made more history last night. His 25 points, 11 rebounds, and 10 assists made LeBron the first ever player to record a triple-double against all 30 NBA teams. The Lakers have the league's best record right now at 12-2. and two. Shannon is loving it. Mm -hmm. uh, Two-time NBA champ David yep. West now joining us. So good to have you with us, and David. Allow me to say... In the NBA, there are fake tough guys, and there are real tough guys. <laughs> this is a real tough guy. Real tough. The real deal. Way to go. Awesome. Appreciate mm -hmm. you being here. So when you look at the Lakers, David, do they look like a championship team to you? Oh, yeah. Um, you know, first of all, I mean, a healthy LeBron on any team is a championship caliber team, mm. uh, in my opinion. Um, but, yeah, with, you know, with AD and then some of the other guys who are you know, comfortable mm -hmm. and figuring things out for themselves. Uh, they're going to be tough to beat. Mm. It is what it is. I mean, mm. I mean, Shannon's going to so, like that it, statement. It, 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 you lost to LeBron three times when you were in Indiana, but he was with Dwayne and Chris and mm -hmm. the Heat. Mm -hmm. Then you beat LeBron twice. You had Golden State Warriors right. around you, right. but you went 8-1 and one against him in the finals mm -hmm. games, right? Right. So what was the difference in... Miami LeBron versus what you saw from Cleveland LeBron? Uh, the teams I was on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, in Indy, we were uh, a younger team, you know, scrappy. We had an identity. Um, and we could never reach the level that, you know, that group in Miami could, could you, get You to, pushed right? them pretty yeah, we hard. We pushed them, but, yeah. you know, it was just that, that next step mm -hmm. that you have to get to to win. Um, and he could get there, uh, get any group there. Obviously, in Golden State, we had the talent and those guys who knew how to get there. And you know that's the only where you can the only place you can beat him is up, up here. Mm. You know, big moments um, and things like that. So it, he he is who he is. I, and I long since have accepted you know this guy um, and and the level that he's at. Um, and it's just a matter of you having the, you know, the toughness and the guts to try to compete mm -hmm. against mm. him. That's what it's going to come down. So to. your coach in, in Indiana was obviously his coach now. Sure. Frank Vogel. Mm -hmm. Can Frank be a championship coach? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, Frank's uh, got a different style. Um, you know, the way that he approaches the game. Uh, you know, he's a very, he's a player-centered mm -hmm. coach. Um, he's got the idea that, um, you know, he's going to get the most out of you and invest in you. Uh, and he probably doesn't have to do it much with this group as much as he had to do it with us in Indiana. Um, but, you know, he's going to have them up, you know, motivated, excited, 
um, you know, refreshed, mm-hmm. feeling like... How? Rah-rah speeches? Yeah. Or- uh, well, he, he just, he's got an us-against-them kind of mentality. Um, you know, his favorite saying is something we can't say on TV. Ooh. Um, but- <laughs> What's the gist of it? <laughs> <laughs> it's, a t- it's it's tough, um, you know, for him to uh, for him to be uh, a coach in the position that he's in now. You know, he's got to be able to you know figure things out for himself. Yeah. Um, but he's a guy, like I said, can get people um, motivated and get the best out of them. Did he push you guys on the defensive end because he appears to have lit a fire under this team on that end? Yeah, absolutely. Um, defensively, um, you know, that's sort of what we were known for in, in Indy was having that defensive edge and that defensive focus. Did he preach and teach that? Yeah, absolutely, all the time. Mm-hmm. And he holds you accountable. Um, and he's not one of those guys that's going to, you know, point the finger at you and, 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 and you know, get you in a defensive mode. He's, he's going to encourage you and, and pull it out of you. Mm. When you look at this team, they're number one in net defense. Now, they block about seven and a half shots, 7.8 shots a game. That's one and a half more than second place. Right. That gap between them and second place is the equivalent, equivalent between second place and 20th. Right. So they're a defensive team. Like you said, Frank Vogel is that. But what gives you the, the, the confidence? Because Skip mentioned their top th- they got three guys that's in the top 20 in dunks. Mm-hmm. Right. I think they're in the top. 10, aren't they? Top 10? I believe so. Mm-hmm. Well, go might, ahead. Go ahead. Right. Yeah. But they lead the league. They're 10. It's a team. It's, yeah. it's, 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 it's three-point shooting, mid-range shooting, and I think they have a lack of ability to guard the three-point line. That's why, That's what That's what concerns me. Right. Because I think they have the talent. With AD, has been, um, he's been right. added, advertised. And LeBron James, I guess he isn't washed just yet, huh, Dave? Right, 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 right. Yeah, I, listen, they're going to be they're gonna be fine. Um, you know, there's a, a, a level that I think... Um, he knows that he can propel them to. They have the talent, you know, again, the talent is around him to get them over the threshold. Um, the fact that they're such a threat inside, um, and I'm happy for my guy, JaVel. Um, you know, mm. JaVel is a, is, a, is a unique cat, but mm. he can play, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, he plays and, hard. And he's effective. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he's a load, you know. I think you guys are seeing it like, you know, you've got to respect him. Right out there on the floor. And, you know, the more those guys develop their identities, um, all of the sort of things that we look at, the markers, like the three-point line, all those things are going to be, I don't think they're going to be as important. Um, you know, the issue with them, I think, you know, where their weakness might be, maybe at, you know, if LeBron gets tired from having to create and mm-hmm. handle the ball a bit much, but... Rondo played well last night. Yeah. I, thought, I thought Rondo coming in and played. The thing is with him is can he stay healthy, Skip Curry? Remember, right. he was playing well last year, and then he got nicked. And then he was out, you know, he got suspended. Mm-hmm. Then he got nicked, mm-hmm. and then he ended up going on our missing the rest of the year like LeBron did. Mm-hmm. So I think that's going to be the thing because those are really their two creative guys. Those are the guys that initiate the offense, mainly LeBron and Rondo. Right. And if one of the – and they did a great job because they try to stagger AD. LeBron will leave in the first quarter. Yeah. Le, uh, AD finishes out. Then LeBron comes back. AD misses the first six minutes. But when one of those guys will always be on the floor. Right. And then as the – you know, obviously as the games become more important, right. people are going to have to deal with them on the floor for 40 minutes. Have that's to deal with that. You hear that, Skip Bayless? So They're going to have to deal with Braun, Goat right. James, for 40. Well, he played 37 last night against the woeful Thunder. And mm-hmm. I think it's too many too soon, but that just means he's in year 17. Can you sustain that? Because it's a lot of minutes. It's a, he took yeah. nine shots in the fourth quarter. You love that? I love it. Okay. I love him playing. Yeah. yeah. You, you'd rather him play as opposed to load management, right, David? Yeah. Imagine you had a teammate, he load management. You out there giving everything you got for 35, 40 minutes a night, mm. and he kicked back, talking about, I'll, I'll be there for you for the playoff. <laughs> He's talking about Kawhi Leonard. I ain't right, talking right. about what nobody. I ain't bring up no name, David. I ain't bring up no name. <laughs> yep. I can yep. either confirm nor deny that's who I'm talking uh-huh. about. Right. I ain't thinking about infer. Kawhi what do you think? load management. I, you know, I, because I know Kawhi, yep. um, there's something there huh. in terms of, the seriousness of what he's dealing with with his health. Okay. That's the only reason. Like, I don't know, you know, details, but I do know that dude. And I know that he's organized a certain way mentally. Um, and you that, hear that, Skip? He was hurt when he missed all that time. He was really, yeah, really, really hurt. hurt. And, and a thigh bruise for seven years. He was in there. Nah, but, well, shit, but, and there you go. <laughs> but he's, but again, you know, Kawhi, Kawhi's got different. genuine, yeah, he's got, and he's got a genuine focus about, okay. you know, the game. That what, what is he like around yeah. when you were, like, off camera with yeah, him? Yeah, he's, um, he, again, he's, he's unlike anything I've seen, um, mm. just in terms of, like, he's always in 
mode and wow. he's always ready to go um, probably to his detriment <laughs> right you know mm -hmm. because he's a guy like if you tell him when I got to San Antonio he was still fairly young mm -hmm. and it was one of those things like what, what should I do and if you tell him to do it he just mm -hmm. goes and does it wow um, and I think he's sort of grown into his own more so now over the last few years. So you're saying if his body doesn't feel perfect to him, he doesn't want to go out there because he wants to be perfect. Yeah, he right, wants to right. be able to be 100% yeah, right. yeah. on the defensive end, 100% yeah. on offense. Hmm. Um, you know, he's a guy that, again, is very regimented, and if you're supposed to hedge or get out on the ball, yep. he's going to do it to the best of his ability. Hmm. Hmm. So back to the Lakers. Mm -hmm. In your day and in your prime, you could really shoot the mid-range jump shot. In fact, you, you, that was your bread and butter shot to right. me. Maybe it's a thing of the prehistoric past. Maybe it's just sort of gone away. But going into last night, the Lakers were 27th in the league in mid-range jump shots. I don't know if it even matters because they're dunks and threes. Right. Right. They weren't great from three. They were 23rd going into last night, but they they shot the heck out of them. Yeah, last they did. Night. Right. They got, yeah. Almost made what, about 14 half to 31. Off. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. So. I think they can shoot threes, but do you, is there any mid-range flaw in there where you need to make some? No, I, no, I think AD is going to eat up, and LeBron will eat up the mid-range scoring because, yeah. you know, what, what eventually will happen is the longer the season wears on, the more that, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're gonna, their minutes are going to increase. Playoff time comes. They'll be in the 40 minutes. And then you're going to basically have teams that figuring out how to guard AD 15, 17 feet out, ISO, LeBron, same thing. Um, and it's going to be difficult. It's a mm. challenge I just don't think teams are, are, are built um, so to handle right now. I realize you have not seen Paul George and Kawhi Leonard on the court together, mm -hmm. but if and when they're both healthy and Doc has his complement of stars and, mm -hmm. and pieces, who's better, Clips or Lakers? I've got to go with the Lakers. Okay. I, I just think... Just um, on star power? And, yeah. and I think... Uh, I think the brow is just going to be okay. in this moment. This will be his first crack to yep. like get to the the mountaintop. Mm. The show. Um, and I just, I just think he's going to be too much himself. And then coupled with LeBron, you've got uh, Danny Green, who's got championship pedigree, sure. and Danny's going to be huge for them down the stretch, just in terms of how they need to focus and win games in the playoffs and the pro series. LeBron has obviously been there. Um, you know, JaVale knows what it what he it does. takes. And then, you know, the other guy that, you know, we haven't talked about, but if, um, you know, and I've not been a, a – Dwight and I have had some run-ins, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, if he stays sort of in – Focus. Focus, more mature. <laughs> yeah. um, and if he's in, you know, if he's in tough guy mode where he's being aggressive and he's physically imposing himself – on those second unit teams, hmm. um, like I said, they've got a lot to deal with. Mm. You know, Dave, we, we have a lot of guys come out here and they try to explain. I, I, and he I'm, he, I'm a LeBron. You're a LeBron fan. You lead the president of the LeBron fan club. Well, you are. I am not. But anyway, oh, can you, I, you played against him, like yeah. you said. You played against him for a number of years in the Eastern Conference Finals. You played against him in, 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 the, in, the, in finals. Just how good is LeBron? What makes him so unique? Man, that's a that's a that's a heck of a question. I, so I, I tell people. So the first time I ever saw him play, just to give you some context, okay. he was a he had finished his freshman year in, in high school, and I had finished my freshman year at Xavier. Okay. And we were I was a counselor at Five Star Camp, the oh, old school crazy. camp in Pittsburgh with okay. Garfunkel and yep. those guys. Mm -hmm. huh. And so we would get we would have teams, each counselor's got a team, and we're sitting around one day talking about who's got the best player. Right. <laughs> a guy comes up, uh, I think it's, I forgot his name, he's a training guy, but he says, look guys, there's a kid from Akron <laughs> that we all have to go see. And I'm like, what? He's like, no, we gotta go right now. He's getting ready to play. And so we go, we're done lunch, we're walking over there, and literally I look over the top and steal at half court, two dribbles, wham, and I'm like, Oh wow. Oh wow. And I mean there was just a a quiet and a silence in the whole gym. Like it, five star was like the holy grail of right. basketball mm -hmm. back in the right. day. And their whole like Garfunkel and that whole old oligarchy is sitting there mm -hmm. and they are just mm -hmm. nothing to say. And I remember sitting there, I mean there was a few of us like college guys and we're saying to ourselves like, oh my God. I remember I, I got on the phone with our assistant coach, and I'm like, coach. 
there's a kid from Akron. You got to start recruiting. <laughs> Go get him. He says, are you talking to him? He's from Boston. What are you talking about, Wes? That kid won't ever go to college. I'm like, huh? It's like you're talking about the James kid. So LeBron has always been hmm. sort of different. When fast forward my senior year, I'm now a counselor at Jordan's camp. Right. And he's going into his senior year in high school. Right. And, you know, we're the college guys. We're enjoying the free couple weeks in right. Santa Barbara, having a good old grand time. Yep. LeBron is like this. He's being stretched. He's eating the right food. And we're looking at him and we're looking at ourselves like, what, what are we doing? <laughs> you know, he's a high school kid. Wow. So he's always been separate, right. you know, just in terms of his approach and who he is. And then, you know, when he's on the floor, um, you know, he's got the, the game sort of mastered in his mind. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're looking at him. And I remember in Indiana, we've got him down 2-1. They had two days rest. And he comes back and has one of those triple doubles, mm -hmm. forty something, a whole bunch of rebounds. But I remember Dwayne took that game over. Yeah, both of them. Yeah. But LeBron just mm -hmm. has had this, uh, you know, that he's had it, mm -hmm. and oh, he's yes. got the full, the full gamut of the game under mm -hmm. control. And um, and he's three and six in the finals. Yeah, he's, he's, oh, okay. you had to throw it's that okay. in. Yeah. But That's it, we, story, do, you, do you believe if you'd have had LeBron on your roster with Clay, Steph, and Draymond? Instead of KD, do you believe you guys win the finals with LeBron? Yeah. Hmm. Can't deny it. There you go, David. No Such for, good no perspective. For the no further questions. Uh, so that's love it. that. It's over. Love that LeBron. Love the Kawhi. Thank uh, you so much for being here. We do quickly want to point out that you're involved in the Historic Basketball League, which is a college basketball league that will allow athletes to benefit financially while getting their education. So really looking forward to yeah. seeing that grow when you start playing games. So thank you so much again for being no here. Mercy. Despite Dak Prescott being on pace for a record year, the Cowboys have not signed the play caller to an extension. Cowboys Hall of Famer quarterback Troy Aikman weighed in and said that the sooner a deal gets done, the better it will be for both sides. Shannon, do you agree that the sooner the Cowboys get the deal done, the better? Yeah, for them. <laughs> the Dak price is going up. Mm. Mm. Okay. And and I've said this before. Skip didn't want to believe this. I said, what's holding this contract up is that Dak is not willing to give a hometown discount. Mm. I received very good information that was the case. Okay. That is the case. That is the only reason mm. that this deal has not gotten mm. done. And it won't get done. Oh, he'll get him. No, he won't. Because he didn't have the luxury of a Jerry Goff. He didn't have the luxury of coming into one of the first two picks mm -hmm. and getting $30 million off mm -hmm. the top. He was a fourth-round draft pick. He's finally making, in football uh, 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 money, over a million dollars a year. I think he's making about $2 million this year. Yeah. So he's like, I can't. And he can never make up for what he didn't get for not for being drafted in the fourth yeah. round. Hit for hit and skip and it, because if you look at it, Skip, clearly this contract has not weighed on his mind. He's playing his tail off. So it hasn't weighed on him. An injury for a quarterback is different than any other position, Skip. Uh, a, uh, uh, a wide receiver gets an ACL injury in a contract year, a running back, that's a game changer. Mm -hmm. For a quarterback, they could bounce back because they're different. They're viewed differently. Mm -hmm. So Dak Prescott says, you know what? I'm here now, Skip. Because he's looking at it like this. I'm in week 10. There is no turning back. So even if he's just conservative, Skip, he throws for 250 a year. Mm -hmm. He's going to be well into the 4,000s. He hits that 300 mark, what he is right now, he's going to be at 5,000. Imagine a guy mm. in a contract year at quarterback with 5,000, 30-plus touchdowns, and you win the division again, you make a playoff run. Mm. Now, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen, Jerry. Mm. You're going to make a bad situation worse mm. because what you're going to do, you're going to be forced to franchise him. Mm. And he won't oh. like that. Mm. So, no, it's only work. The sooner it only work out for good for Jerry because Dak says, I'm in a very, very, in other words, I'm in the catbird seat now. Mm. I got all this huh. in mm. my hands. And I'm weighing, and I ain't signing because hmm. I want more than Jerry Golf got. You see how he playing? Hmm. Has Jerry Golf ever had a year like I'm having? I don't think so. Uh -oh. So it's gonna cost you, Jerry, and it's going up. What you gonna do with it, bro? Hmm. You keep telling me Jerry Golf beat Stack. Whoa, 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 what's time, going on? Right? Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's hmm. so what you keep telling me. I, 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 I know what I'm saying, hmm. but just because you beat doesn't mean you're better. Hmm. That's what you need to understand. Hmm. I need you to understand that. Hmm. So. 
I take a very different perspective on this because I am a Dallas Cowboy fan, and all I care about is that they back up my prediction that they're going to get to the <laughs> Super Bowl against the team they're about to play this Sunday. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's inadvertent, maybe it's by accident, but Jerry Jones is playing this perfectly as far as the season goes. Okay. I don't care about who's going to win the negotiation right now. I'll care about it when it happens. <laughs> but there is no way that Jerry Jones should force a conclusion to this right now. Because to your point, one point you made, it's working the way it is. Mm -hmm. If it ain't broke, don't pay him, right? And he ain't broke right now because he's got a bunch of commercials he's doing, right? Oh, he, he does. Quite well. he so quite I think well he's doing Dallas. okay. Uh, yeah. He doesn't need the money. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs the money. But, but he'll get the money mm -hmm. sooner than later. Right. But I want it to be a little later because I want him to continue to thrive the way he's thriving with that chip on his shoulder that could turn into a championship chip mm -hmm. because he's betting on himself. Every move he makes on Sundays or Sunday nights or Monday nights or whenever they play, it just it screams to me, watch this, Jerry, or watch this world. I, I'm going to show you because he is very criticized, and I'm sure there's a part of him that's a little bit stung, just a little bit hurt that this deal didn't get done in training camp. Okay. So he, he thrives on this dynamic of, I'll show you. He's a fourth round pick. He's always been trying to show you, right? He's been trying to show you, the man across the table, for four years now. Watch this, watch this, and watch this contract. Watch, mm -hmm. watch my contract drive. So why should Jerry Jones blow up this dynamic? Let me ask you this. What just happened in preseason when he finally gave in and said, Zeke, I'll give you 50 million guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Did it work? Not so far, because I'm not seeing the same Zeke. It's possible that Zeke got paid, and he really got paid. He deserved it. Paid. He did deserve it. But you have to pay somebody for what he will do, not what he has okay. done. Okay. But, Skip, mm -hmm. now you know what happened with Baltimore. Mm -hmm. let, me, or, let me finish about wait, Zeke. Wait, okay. It's possible that Ezekiel Elliott just lost a little bit of edge, a little bit of drive, a little bit of commitment, a little bit of I'll show you when he got paid. So because it happens. So you You're human. So you don't believe Zeke will ever be what he once was? I, I hope I'm wrong about that, but I'm not seeing the same guy, and I haven't all year. Haven't seen the same burst, the same attack mode, the same body lean, the same contagious rage that he used to play with. I don't see that. I, I still think Zeke is, is hungry and wants to get it, but I look at Dak, and Dak is wired a little differently. I think what transpired with his mom passing mm -hmm. and him wanting to do things for her, and I think that chip on his shoulder, Skip, that he believes that he should have been drafted higher than the fourth round. Mm -hmm. And he's playing like, like, okay, yeah, okay, this was my draft class. Carson Wentz and Jerry Goff and yada, yada, yada. Yep. I'm better than those guys. That's what and he's that, saying. And this mm -hmm. is what they got. It. I'm better because, Skip, you remember, the Baltimore Ravens made a fatal mistake Joe Flacco for a million dollars or two million dollars extra in the first three years, they said no. Joe Flacco went and won the Super Bowl he in a did. contract year, and it was, he blew it up. He was the highest paid for like three years, Skip. He's the highest wow. paid. You make the mistake, and you let Skip, if you know what's going to happen, mm -hmm. what you thought you were going to pay him, if he gets two and win a Super Bowl, Skip, you're going to be okay. very disappointed. Well, well I, you will be disappointed because he what he's gonna do. I, I, he's gonna take so much I of your do handsprings in no, the no, middle no. of this desk. He's gonna take so much <laughs> of your cap. Yep. You go like, Dak, how could you do if that? If he wins the Super Bowl, it'll be worth every penny. <laughs> okay. You can strap my cap for the rest of my life. I'll take it. I'm going to remember when you said that. No, 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 I don't want that to happen because yeah. I don't I'm want gonna you to because you, you gonna come out here. Who won the Super Bowl? Uh, Who won the Super Bowl? You'll Bowl's never guy? hear the end of it. Never. Yeah. You're the type of guy that will never let anything no. go, Skip. Good. You did not <laughs> do it. <laughs> that would Love be a it. good reason yeah. to never let it go. But guess who did this uh -huh. to my salary cap already? Skip. Yes, he you, did. Let me ask you a question. He's eating plenty. You don't mind me asking. Skip, let me ask you a question. He ate $50 million <laughs> worth of yeah. it. Who did you want that you didn't get to keep or you didn't sign because he got $50 million? I don't know. Byron Jones is coming up. 
I, I think he's a really good player. The rest of the guys on defense, I'm not sure about. But Skip, Wolf Hunter has sort of declined. Oh, well, what about D Law? You got D Law got 20 million million. I know, but he already got it. Oh, exactly. He got, got 100 it. total million. Yeah. Not guaranteed, but he got Jalen Smith got paid. He got paid. But Skip, you know you can't pay everybody. You, the salary cap's been in, the, in effect since okay. 1993. Right. You know you can't pay everybody. Mm-hmm. It was designed mm-hmm. by just the simple fact that there is a salary cap mm-hmm. lets you know that you can't keep everybody. Nobody in this league has discovered more loopholes in salary caps than Jerry Jones. So maybe he can discover a couple of more. No, Jerry Jones is the only one that wants to spend. Jerry Jones is spend. He doesn't really care. Mm. Everybody else says they want to win, but they're not willing to spend okay. to win. Mm. Jerry Jones says, I want to win, and he'll spend to win. Now, the Patriots will, but somehow they convince guys to take, unless you're, uh, 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 you know, Skip, you're in the free like Stephon Gilmore. They had to overpay. That's because, the only one. Yeah. But other than that, Skip. Tom Brady, hometown discount. Everybody got hometown year. discount. Yeah. Or you they're like, and then what they normally do, Skip, is they get you a couple of years early. They signed Gronk to that monster deal, but it was two years early. And then a year, two years into the deal, you're like, hmm? that's all Gronk making? Yeah. Yep. Gronk's the best. This Well, they already they got you tied up, and they don't, re, they don't renegotiate, Skip. No. You, you get what you got. What you, whatever you sign up for, that's what you're getting. Where we also part ways, you and I, on this, I do believe that in the end, Dak Prescott will take some hometown discount. He is the leader of this team. Mm -hmm. He is a winner by nature, and he is wired to want to win a little bit more than he wants to dominate the salary cap. He don't want to dominate the salary cap, but he don't want to be paid what he's worth because he – hold on. Todd Archer wrote that piece. Todd Archer said he's doing things. No other quarterback, Roger Starback, Troy Aikman, Tony Romo, all of them. None of them never done this. Mm-mm. Back-to-back games. Ooh. Most passing yards in Cowboy history. And then 5,000. Mm. Cheating, that's another 10 million. Mm. Lead to lead, touchdown passes. That's another 5 million. Mm. Yeah. The practice skip. Well, it's going up. And it takes See, a special so guy to just, be fueled by You it. just want dissension I don't want chaos. Yep. Skip, is, Skip is like property in Malibu. Yeah. Guess what? It ain't coming down. No. Because mm. guess what? The ocean ain't going anywhere. Mm. And they ain't making no more land. Mm. So. I think it has come down. So okay. Actually. There's been so many fires. Has and, it? And I mean, yeah, I guess I hadn't Guess what? That. Somebody dying to get up there. Yeah, there was a fire up there and somebody dying to get some property up there. Sometimes I look at the prices on the Malibu beachfronts and I'm like, really? It's that low? Yeah. I just don't want to drive to Malibu. It's an outhouse. Yeah. That's, what, that's why it's that low. <laughs> it's an outhouse. <laughs> if you look at the square footage. Yeah, it's a thousand square foot and they want four and a half million. I can see for you it. on the beach hanging out. I don't want to at 3 30 in the morning have to drive. Yeah, yeah I'm thinking about, thinking about thinking about get me a little get me a little something up there. Okay, you Some, don't a little need getaway. A, house. a little summer house. A, a little getaway. Get, a little getaway. You know, with your Bel Air mansion. <laughs> no mercy. The Cowboys are six and a half point underdogs, according to Fox Bet, as they travel to New England Sunday. This will be the first ever matchup between Dak and Brady and arguably the most highly anticipated matchup of this season. So, yep. Shannon, is this line too high, too low or just right? Well, it feels about right for me. Uh, the Patriots at home, they're 91 in the regular season. They won 17 straight regular season home games. Last loss came week four against the Carolina Panthers and Cam Newton. Well, you know, kind of, you know, Dak can run with his legs a little bit, can throw the football, so it'd be very interesting. I think the thing is, Skip, is that reason why it's probably not – there's two reasons why it's not, it's not more. Hmm. The Cowboys have come up short against teams that currently – that would be in the playoff, the Saints, uh, the Vikings, and the Packers. But also Vegas is saying, yeah, while they have a historic defense, their offense leaves a lot to be desired. And the likelihood of this offense and this team being able to pull away, mm, so six fields, you know, six fields about. Now, if this was the Patriots offense that we've seen over the last, say, three, four years, I, I, I'm thinking the line would probably be 10. Mm. But because this offense has struggled and they're not going to pull, I don't believe they're going to pull away unless Dallas just turns the ball over and gives them short fields. And I mm. think they'll do a good job of taking care of the football. So, for me, Skip, I, it feels about right to me. I don't think it's too high. I don't think it's too low. Mm. I think they're probably a touchdown better, all things being equal. My first reaction to the spread was, finally! <laughs> took all year long, it took 10 games for my team to be an underdog. Mm. You realize my team has been favored to win every game, and my team is 6-4. and four. That's interesting. Favored to win every game. Every one of them. Wow. You know. Green Bay, New Orleans, every one of them. I thought about it. Go look. Favorite. Take Dallas in the points, then. Yeah. This Vegas, is good. This Ve- is good. I like it. 
Okay. Because finally my team is maybe going to get challenged a little bit like you, you guys. And they're not just underdogs. They're 6.5. Oh, how do you, you figure they're going to get challenged when you say they got a guy that couldn't, ro- could, couldn't uh, uh, motivate a rodeo bull? External motivation. <laughs> what but is I it? Tell you, it takes Doug Peterson. That was the only game my team has yep. played all year where I said, there it is. I came out here on Monday. I said, voila. <sighs> there it is. You right? Went- That's who they can be. They are capable of. So you That's the, the team that pro football focus even this week says best team in pro football, Dallas Cowboys. That's what they rank. So what Coach Belichick goes okay. I, I don't care what he's going to say. I oh, just care so that the spread is oh, screaming so the, at my team. You guys are in trouble. So the spread is what's going to be the external Well, you need motivation. something. You need Dougie P to say, Dougie Prediction to say, we're going to go down there and kick their ass. No, I need, a lead, I need a lead on my team. Yeah. The guy that got the C on his jersey. Not, not capable. Not capable. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, you mean oh, I thought it was Coach Clapp. Yeah! Oh. The guy that got the C on his jersey. I don't even know who has a C. Oh, he does. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the guy he'll be just the... fine. Well, he leads with his play. I don't, that's right. I don't need no external. So here's players. what I do every week. Okay. I always try to make the spread myself before I look at the actual one so that I can say, ooh, the odds makers are out of we whack saw, on this one right. as far as I'm seeing it. So I made this spread four, maybe four and a half, and it's six and a half. And I'm like, wow. Because arguably you have – the best offense, although there's no run game, but the best passing attack against the number one defense in mm-hmm. Belichick, right? And Bill Belichick at home. Mm-hmm. And then you got my defense, which is pretty shaky against a maybe even shakier Your offense. B- Patriot Your offense. offense. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to hark back to two games last year. And remember, my defense is really just about the same as it was last year, except that you added Robert Quinn and Michael Bennett to Michael it, right? Michael Bennett, we're getting out the court. Okay, okay. Play well. so, so you upgraded a little bit, but, but the kids in the secondary, they're all kind of about the same, right? Okay. Okay, what did they do? They gave you a shocking virtuoso, I'm going to use your word, on that Thursday night. That was late in the year. That was November 29th against Drew Brees. They held him to 127 passing yards, a QBR of 15 on a scale of 0 to 100, and they won 13 to 10. That's a virtuoso. Yes. You see, who saw that coming? Right. And then the playoff game at home against Russell Wilson. Your MVP right now, yep. right? And they held, that was the number one rushing attack. They held it to 73 yards rushing. And Russell had 150 odd yards passing until the two minute warning when he finally hit little Tyler Lockett for 53 yards to sort of get them a little bit back in the game. Mm-hmm. The Dallas led 24 to 14. They wound up 24 22. It was a virtuoso defensive performance. I haven't seen it all year. Are they capable? Yeah, well, oh, yeah. you saw last year they were. What's the difference? Well, I don't know. What if you gave Bill Belichick my defense, the talent on my defense? Uh, do you think he could do some, make yeah. some magic with that defense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Could he do what he does with his? Maybe not with the secondary, because right. his secondary is really They're good. Very talented. Deep. Very, yep. very talented. But Skip, the thing is, Michael Bennett. Very motivated. Okay, against gave up on the him. team that gave up and on him. And plus, he might they're gonna put him up on them lights. Okay, tell him what hey, what he calls. What, what's the cause when you're mm. doing this? What does that mean? Well, as as long as he doesn't line up off sides a couple times, I'll be just fine with <laughs> Wait, Michael skip, Bennett. Now you know he's gonna get a procedure, Skip. Okay. He's gonna be well, he just does. Yeah, he, he got to get it. Skip, I, I, I got to get him. Yeah. I got to get it, Tom. Okay, so I, I'm back to six and a half. I, I say, where is that coming from? But then I hark back to what I keep. What's my gut feeling about my team? I love my quarterback. I don't love my team because it can't run it, not, not the way it used to, can't stop the run, can't stop the pass, and in takeaways, it's, it's pretty terrible. They don't take it away. They, they just don't take <laughs> it away. Don't. And look at the, the uh, turnover ratio. The Patriots lead the league with plus 18 because they just take it away. They lead right. the league in takeaways. So the Cowboys are tied for 18th in turnover ratio. They're minus one because they don't take it away. And they, they – Dak – They gave it, away, the, gave it away a couple of times okay, early. Okay, they did. But Dak last year was a fumbling machine because he would try to do too much. Right. And it was sack fumbles everywhere. Mm-hmm. This year, none. Okay? So, but still – my, my defense just can't take the ball away, so theirs really can. They, they scoop and score and pick it off and return it. Oh, like, yeah, they, they've they, got four defensive touchdowns. They're definitely trying to get to the house. And the thing is, Skip, is that when you look at the Patriots, it, to, to understand just how good their defense is, they've given up more than 14 points once. Yep. And that was they got blown out to the Ravens. Mm-hmm. So if Tom Brady can get you 17, they'd still be 9-1. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
So in other words, what I tell you, they winning in spite of, but that ain't none of my business. Mm. We're talking about the spread here. Is he throwing interceptions? Skip, no. Skip, he's talking, we talking about the spread. Huh. I'm just saying, just huh. so you know. Yep. If Julian Edelman had hung on to the touchdown pass, they would have broken that game open yeah, long been before nothing, then. They broken nothing. Yeah, I think nothing. so. Well, why they ain't been breaking them open before? Why that game was going to be different? They're going to break it open. Huh. No receiver he can trust except Edelman. Oh. No run game. Oh. No blocking. Oh. Uh. Yeah. But I don't so. hear none of that. When they win, he trusts everybody, huh? Mm. When, they lose, when they win, they can run against everybody. Mm. Yeah. Now when they lose. It ain't got nothing to do with his age. It ain't got nothing to do with the receiver. The guys from Dorchester that are making plays for him. Nope, they're not. Coach Belichick defense gave up 41. Yep. My defense turned Jeff Driscoll into Lamar Jackson last mm. week. Sunday in Detroit. You like that? Okay, that's your defense. That's yep. your team. I don't know. I can't figure them out. I don't, don't, don't no. need to. I figure, I help you figure them out. When we're talking about them in the playoff start and they're not in there, I help mm. you understand mm. it. You're still sticking with it. Yep. Still stick with that. That, I think, is... You're going to eat so much fried <laughs> A little worrisome. We're going to get back on. You can put a little barbecue sauce after, on it. After this week, yeah, we'll, be tired for, we'll be tired for the division again. Mm. Boy, he's <laughs> just trying to say it and wish it into so existence. So, how is your team, the Eagles, going to beat your MVP, Russell Wilson? That's what I want to know. You do realize the MVP does not have to have a perfect record. Huh. Okay? Really? Yeah. So, he's going to lose? He's going to slip a little bit this week? That might be a stretch. You do realize, like, Lamar Jackson has a tough opponent, too. Yeah. He's got a bunch of tough opponents. Right. Okay. Yep. But I believe he's going to be up to the task. Huh. Okay. I'm so ready for this game. What a weekend. Ah, oh, really the games. Good. I love it. Are you going to sleep before this one, Skip? Do you, do you fall asleep before this game? No. No. No mercy. Way back at the beginning of October, Jerry Jones compared Dak Prescott to Tom Brady, saying that Dak has the ability, like Brady, to beat opponents in different ways, under different circumstances, and with different types of teams. So, Shannon, is it total blasphemy to compare Dak to the Tom Yes, Brady? hell yes. He's only had one team. Mm. What team is he had that's different? We just got blasphemy and hell in the same sort yes. of thing. Yes. Right. yes. Yeah. Come on. Okay. Skip, you know good well. What team? Dak has only had one team. Dak has not had a plethora of teams where he's had to, to win games without Zeke mm. because he hadn't shown he can do that. And by the way, compare him to Tom Brady. Tom Brady, second year, he won a Super Bowl. Mm. Dak, second year, he missed the playoffs. Mm. That's, that's comparable. And when we talk about winning, what does he want exactly? Mm. Get glad they're right. <sighs> I'm trying to look at it. I don't see nothing. <laughs> y'all hanging, I mean, they, they, y'all, y'all hang up banners for a uh, NFC East title? Because mm. when I go, when I look at, when they pan the stadium at, uh, at Gillette, all I see is Super Bowls. I don't see nothing about no AFC East. Come on, Skip. Mm. <laughs> look, Dak has played unbelievable. Unbelievable. Leading the league in passing. Yards per attempt. QBR. All of that for six and four. Mm. For six and four. But I like Brady. Uh, Brady didn't lead the league in passing and all that other stuff until late, later, later on. Mm. But I tell you what he did lead in. Mm. Super Bowls. Led in that. So when Dak get a couple of those, then we're going to start talking about comparisons. Mm. But until then, I'm going to compare him to Matthew Stafford. Mm. He ain't won nothing either. Mm. So that's what the comp- that's what the comparison <laughs> is. Matthew Stafford won his division mm. twice the, 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 in three the, years. Twice in three years is Matthew. I don't remember. Skip. Maybe I forgot. Skip. That's like being the biggest little person in the circus. Well, You're still in the circus, bro. Okay. Slow down. So, okay? help me out. In 2001, Tom Brady's first year as the starter in New England, Bill Belichick had what kind of a defense? It was really good. Yeah. In fact, it pulled off a historic virtuoso performance oh, really? in the Super Bowl. You mentioned Coach Belichick's right? defense? Yeah. No, that was Tom, well, I always say that was his greatest achievement right there. Coached by Bill Belichick. <laughs> Does Dak have Bill Belichick coaching that 2001 defense to back him up? Nope, he does not. No. Hmm. Okay. And, and uh, uh, Dak Prescott don't have Mr. Kraft as an owner either, but that's none of my business. I don't hmm. even know why I brought that up. Okay. Hmm. So, since day one of this show, dating to 2016, I have said over here and I have told you that Dak Prescott is Brady esque. I never said he was Tom Brady. He will never be Tom Brady because there's only one of those guys. But he is Brady-esque in that you can compare him to Tom Brady in a few categories. Like what? Like, number one, leadership intangibles. He is the leader of this locker room just the way Tom controls the New England locker room. 
in spite of what Coach Belichick sometimes does to the team. The team follows Tom Brady. They follow Coach Belichick. No, they don't. They follow Tom Brady. And in this case, Dak Prescott can match Tom Brady in big game, big stage play making. Key plays at key moments because all, all he's done, I don't know how he did this in his first three years, is Dak Prescott led the NFL in game-winning drives. So I think, given the opportunities on bigger and bigger stages, he can match Tom Brady in clutchness because Tom Brady is the clutchest athlete I've ever seen because he's had so many opportunities. Yeah. But he can at least be in the same conversation in clutchness. You do understand that had Tom Brady done all this winning in the regular season mm -hmm. with no moments in the playoffs, it would have all been for naught. Okay. So we're talking about this guy, he's throwing for 463, 444. When has he done that in a meaningful playoff game? Mm. Well, he hasn't had many opportunities. Okay, so. so when he gets those opportunities, when he do it, let's start the comparison okay, again. So his rookie year, his defense failed to show up in his first ever playoff game, and they fell behind 28 to 3. Mm -hmm. And then here he, he came. Where here he came he? again. Where was he? And you know, he looked Brady esque in that game to me as a raw rookie nah, against the Green Bay Packers. I saw, I saw, he I saw, threw I, for 300 yards and out QBR'd Aaron Rodgers in that game. You know, he took the well, But let me ask you a question, Skip. Let's just say, hmm. for the sake of argument, the New England Patriots, when they fall behind Atlanta, 28 to 3. Mm -hmm. Tom Brady throws for 600 yards mm -hmm. and they lose. What are we talking about? The Falcons won the Super Bowl. Okay. Because, they, because remember, he threw for 505 against the Eagles. That didn't, you don't get no kudos for that. They don't yeah. hang no statues for that. Mm. So all this, this 463, this 444, this 397, what have they gotten in? Mm. Six and four. That's where we are. When has Tom Brady ever been six and four? One time. The man has been six and four one time in his life. You always tell me how great Bill Belichick. You say he's the greatest coach ever, greatest defensive coach yeah. ever. Yeah. So does Dak Prescott have lie. that on his side? Well, nope. Lie. What a lie. Nope, what nope, a lie. nope. No last spoken. Yep. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. No, skip. Dak's just doing it by himself. Oh, my goodness. You and he is Brady-esque in the way he distributes the football mm. because he doesn't have a rifle arm, a cannon arm. He doesn't have Pat Mahomes' arm. Neither does Tom Brady. It's Montana-esque. He throws it above average, but he can throw it hard when he needs to and soft and on it, schedule and skip, on time. If you, if, you don't mind me, if you don't mind me asking, he's doing it by himself. Why were you crying? that he didn't have a number one receiver before he got Amari. Mm. If he's doing it by himself, mm -hmm. if he was doing it by himself, Jerry Jones was not going to spend a first rounder to go bring in Amari Cooper. I told you it changed life in Dallas. But, but he was doing it by himself. Put him back on the map. He was doing it by he himself. He needed him, but he hasn't uh, had Amari consistently all year. He has been hurt. Skip. He has been hurt Skip. and hurt. He's hurt in training camp. Yeah. Skip. Didn't even get to practice. He's hurt in training he's camp. Lingering. And the man got 200 yards in a game. He's hurt, but he got 170 receiving. That, is, he, is he top 10 in receiving yards? Amari. But imagine if he was oh, Yes, so. I think so. Yeah. No, I don't think he is, actually. Yeah, he I think is. he's down the line. I, got no. I haven't seen him in top 10. I don't know. But okay. The, the point is that Amari has been hurt too much. And the point oh. is that Michael Gallup missed two games this year because he had knee surgery. And the point is that Randall Cobb has missed some time. And it's been Jason Whitner bust some weeks where it's, that's really all he's had to throw to. And he's still putting up sensational numbers. He's had to do it different ways with different schemes, different personnel. And he just keeps on keeping on. He has the second most victories over the last three and a half years to that guy up in Foxborough. Now, Tom Brady's been to four of the last five Super Bowls. So the last three years, Tom Brady got two Super Bowl wins mm -hmm. in those three years. Yep. What your guy got? Well, he's a young player. How's that? No, wait, no, 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 He's really good. He lost to Dak last year in the what playoffs. Is, Russell Wilson won the Super Bowl uh, yeah, and been did. to another. Yeah. His second year start. Yeah. Hold on. Hold skip. You do, if you, you give Dak Prescott the Legion of Boom in its prime, trust me, Super Bowls will happen you like crazy. Can you imagine if he'd have had Amari Cooper? Mm. Mm. Who? Russell Wilson? Russell Wilson. Russ. Can you imagine Dak with the Legion of Boom with Richard Sherman and Cam Chancellor yep. and Earl Thomas skip. and Bobby skip. Wagner? Skip. Can you imagine what he would do Dak, with that group? Dak is not oh, Russell. Oh, Lord have mercy. Dak is not Russell yeah. Wilson. Yes, he is. No, he's not. He's better. He's a better passer. He's just a better thrower, better distributor. He is. You need help. No, I don't. Yeah, you need and, help. And again, I keep telling you, the most under utilized aspect of the Cowboys' attack is Dak's legs because they're not letting him run. 
He's down 20 runs from where he was last year. You need counseling. No, I don't. <laughs> you do. I need Dak Prescott. You need, I got him. You need to go to church. If you don't. You need Cowboy to go to church. counseling? You to go, yeah, you need to go to church on Sunday, too. Rain Dakota Prescott. Okay. And it's spelled R E I G N. Okay. Rain. I did what? Rain Dakota Press. I need like that energy. That. I need that energy. Uh, I've got it. I need that energy. I've had it all year. I'm oh. talk- can we no. watch the game together on Sunday? No. <laughs> oh, no. Can we all please watch the game together? No, you would not be would sitting like down that. in the flats. <laughs> I'd like to just sit in the middle of you guys and have to keep you apart. No mercy. Antonio Brown posted an apology to social media yesterday along with a picture of him hugging Tom Brady. The caption says, quote, Mr. Kraft, I apologize sincerely to you and your organization. All I wanted to be was an asset to the organization. Sorry for the bad media and drama. Thank you sincerely. B, Shannon, uh, do you like that A.B. apologized? I like the apology. I don't believe he's sincere in his apology. (laughs) This happened two months ago. (laughs) So now... His camp has gotten to him and said, A.B., you need to sh- show some contrition. Yep. What would have been the pr- appropriate thing to do? You tweet this out on a Sunday. You follow it up on Monday. You know I apologize. Have you apologized to the Steelers for bringing drama to them? Mm. Have you apologized to the Raiders? All this is, Skip, is the PR spin. A.B., you might need to show some contrition in order for you to get back into the league. Yep. And that's what he did. I don't buy anything this guy's selling. Mm, I would agree. By the way, Tom Brady liked A.B.'s oh. Instagram post. Mm-hmm. Because so Tom Brady loved social. A.B. while he was a Patriot. Yeah. And I think Tom Brady is trying to send a message like, I, I don't have A.B. So he's still mopey Tom instead of the psycho Tom that I love. A.B. Loved. ain't going back to New England, Skip. He's he could apologize. Going back. You know, he wants moping, I still believe sure. that A.B. is a million miles away from being declared eligible again to play in the NFL. Yes. And, again, this just smacks of desperation. Thank doesn't you. get it yet. Yeah. And, again, there's certain things you can't really apologize for. <laughs> when you take that shot at that owner, really? yeah. I just don't know if you can build that bridge back again. I just don't think. Well, well, Skip, what happened to I'm free? Mm. I'm oh. free. Hey, running outside, I'm free. You free, bro? Feels long ago. What about school? How's school going? Yeah, how is class? Skip, mm. he's got I mean, good days? question. I need to hear the dean list or something, Skip. Yeah. Maybe. I want to see study the GPA. Hall, I mean, you got study hall, you just go you know, go in your bedroom and go to study hall. Mm. No, I don't believe anything he says. Skip, mm. he ain't sorry. And he's you know so- what? what he's sorry about, he doesn't have a job. That's what he's sorry about. I don't know how this is happening, but the NFL's going on just quite nicely without him. What? Shocking. You mean to tell me they're going to play by A.B. rules? Mm. Yeah. I thought the they difference. were going to play by A.B. rules. I thought no it was No one bigger than the NFL. No. Uh, that is it for us. We'll be back tomorrow morning at 9.30 Eastern. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Jenny Taft. Join us again at the same time tomorrow morning, 930 Eastern. We'll see you then. Fox Sports. One of one. Of one. Of one. Of one.